It's time for Hutchinson Community College Sports. The Blue Dragons on Eagle Radio are brought to you in part by Rothy Family Flooring, Anchor In and Anchor Away, Erickson Custom Building, H&R Block, APAC Kansas, Shears Division, Prairie Star Health Center, First National Bank, The Medicine Shop, Reno County Area Transit, RCAT, Next Tech Wireless, Midwest Ford and Toyota, Salt City Pond, Amelia Bedelius, Brickhouse Boutique, Ashcraft Pharmacy, and these Sportscaster Club members, Low Corporation, Burning Chiropractic, Dr. Robert Epp, Portfolio Recovery, Green Vision Group, Craig Barkley Plumbing, and Mega Manufacturing. All the exciting action of the Blue Dragons is on now. Let's go to the broadcast booth for the play-by-play with the Eagle Sports Crew on Eagle Radio. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Greenhouse in Liberal, Kansas. We're on the campus of Seward County Community College. Glenn Drumwell joined by Darren Dunn this afternoon for Blue Dragon basketball, specifically with the 4 o'clock tip, the Lady Blue Dragons, as they take on the number two in the nation's ranked Seward Lady Saints. Again, this game was supposed to be played yesterday, but due to the weather conditions that happened, matter of fact, we saw a, a semi turned over. Uh, in the uh, one of the medians, or just about 10 miles down the road from here, from uh, Liberal, and uh, it was uh, yesterday was a little precarious out here with the winds. They actually closed both highways that head west out of Dodge and the one at west out of Pratt as well, to because of whiteout conditions. So I'm not sure we would have got. We might have got here. I'm not sure we would have got back. But anyway, a wise move done by the administration um, of Hutchison to decide to bump this game till today, and yeah, it makes you one day short to be able to rest, possibly if you have to play on Wednesday. But the uh, Hutchison ladies hope they do not have to play on Wednesday. They hope they can pull a whip upset because Seward County Ladies Saints, uh, with a record of 19-1 and in the conference, tied with Hutchison with a re- record of 19-1. and The difference would be that Seward beat the Blue Dragon ladies. Seward at 27-2, and ranked number two. Blue Dragons at 28-1, and ranked number six. And Darren Dunn, this is for all the marbles, so to speak, is this big matchup right here. The winner gets a bye. The loser gets the third seed and will have to play a game from first round coming up on Wednesday, which right now looks like it would be Allen Community College, Allen County would be coming in. You hope that you can get a win and get that little extra day's rest. Yeah, that Jayhawk West title on the line. So what's the difference if you got to wait one more day? You kind of build up that anticipation for a game like this. You look across the board. As far as what the Blue Dragons have done over the seasons, especially with John Anches at the helm, and they've just been so dominant with so many teams across the league and across the nation. This is one of the teams that you really see that back and forth to where there's not one advantage to the Blue Dragons over the other team. In fact, here in Liberal, the Blue Dragons are 16 and 25, have not won here since Jamie Patrick, who's an assistant on this team, was actually out on the court wearing the Blue Dragon uniform. That was back in January of 2014. So four trips out here have proven fruitless for the Blue Dragons. This would be a big victory here this afternoon. Now, a couple games, there's three actually being played today that were supposed to have been played yesterday. One is here, Hutchinson at Seward. Also, Barton is out in Garden City. Barton led at halftime over to Garden City Broncosters. Don City also traveled out to Northwest Kansas Tech and got a win. So Dodge comes in as the number five seed in the tournament, and Dodge will travel to Cloud coming up on Wednesday. When uh, well, on the other side of that, Garden and Dodge are tied going into that. Doesn't matter what Garden does now at home. Well, I might. I'm going to have to look at the, the actual win loss. But they were two were tied going into this. Uh, both uh, Garden and and uh, actually Dodge was one game back, and with the win, they are nine and twelve. Depends on what happens with. Garden and Barton, and right now Barton was ahead, so they still could be uh, possibly tied. But anyway, they're starting to kind of all fall together as to who goes where. There's a few t- uh, ties in there, and Darren, you and I were talking about that on the way out here. Is basically they go head to head first, and then they go to the top of the conference and see how you did against those teams. If you're still tied when you get back down to the both of you, you flip coins, and that's how it's decided on home court advantage type of thing. And when it comes to ties, everybody has their own way of doing it, and it's it surprises me the way it's done in the KJCCC, but that's the way they've done it, and that's the way they're going to stick to it. Both teams come in, again, with only one losses on the conference season. Again, the Hutchison is to the Saints just a few weeks ago, and that was a heartbreaker. Uh, Hutchison led by six at halftime, 39-33. We were tied going into the fourth quarter, 47 all, and the wheels fell off, and Seward came out a winner, 70-54, and the worst quarter 
uh, Hutchinson played all year long. And since then, Hutchinson has rolled on six straight wins uh, to uh, do a good job there. On the other hand, Seward, since they lost to Butler, they won 14 straight. And this team with the Butler, with the uh, Seward Saints on right now on a 49-game win streak here at home. Now, that pales a lot to uh, what was done years ago when Hutchinson came in here and popped 140, uh, broke 146-game home win streak, but still a good good win streak overall, 14 straight wins for Seward. And the greenhouse, a tough place to come and play. It tells you right there in that record, and you just mentioned it, the last team to snap a long run by the Saints was the Blue Dragons, so if there's any team that could do it, it's that it's this team here. And a lot has gone into this winning streak just this season for the Seward Saints. You go back and you look, it's not been all blowouts. There have been a lot of close games that have gone the Saints' way, and that's exactly what you need when you end up with a season that's not only a good season but a great season is when you're winning those close games. Five games decided by five points or fewer in their win streak. Another four were decided by ten points or fewer, and one of those went into overtime. So this team is really good at not only winning games but winning those tight games when it comes down to the wire or is forced into OT. Well, the one that really jumps out at you is uh, the the games against Barton. Uh, the, the one went OT where they took control, that was uh, actually here at home, 106-96, to 96. that's back in January, but then they pushed it again to another overtime, it was 81-80, uh, with, uh, at just a couple weeks ago on Saturday the 16th, we remember listening to that game coming back on how close it was down the stretch, so uh, Barton seems to have their number and playing pretty tough, and then Hutchinson really kind of has Barton's number. Isn't it funny how the matchups seem to be st- strange? And again, I always say you can't scoreboard watch and say, well, they have, this team beat this other team by 20, so and we beat them by 10, so we should have a 20-point edge. That's, that's not the way it works. And that is the reason why, because sometimes you do. You get those mismatches, whether they be in the paint or out on the perimeter, or you get teams that just for whatever reason can get out and run on other teams. So that size difference that has made a difference for one team in the post all season long is no longer a difference because this team can get up and down on the court on you. For Barton, a lot of trouble this year. We saw it over Christmas break. A lot of trouble just playing in the arena itself. That said, though, the Dragons did what they did out in Great Bend and were able to show dominance against Barton on ho- at home and on the road this season. Situation where the brackets are starting to fall together a little bit. We'll run down some of the what ifs uh, that can take place. A lot has to do with that Barton and Garden City matchup that's taking place today, especially on the guy's side up in up in Garden City. The girls, like I said, Dodge will uh, will travel the cloud. That's the number five seed. Uh, overall, they will uh, in the West. They'll finish number five in the West, so they'll get the number nine seed. While Garden City will have to travel to Indy is where they will travel. Uh, a couple other ones that are already set, uh, still wide open on number five. We'll, and Coffee and Nosh Neosha will have to see. They're tied up record-wise as well. Let's take a, a couple minute timeout. We'll come back and kind of talk about the starters a little bit. Then we'll take another break for the national anthem. Two minute timeout coming your way. We are in Liberal at the greenhouse. We'll be back in two minutes. If getting a new iPhone is on your wish list, then wish no further. At Next Tech Wireless, all smartphones, including the new iPhones, are 50% off. You can save over $350 on your new iPhone and even trade in your old phone for more credit. Have multiple lines? That's even better because your third, fourth, or even fifth line will get you unlimited data free for a year. Next Tech Wireless has more than 50 store locations to serve you. Switch today and start saving. Certain restrictions apply. Phone guard required. Hi, Brian Bobo, General Manager at Midwest Ford. We have some huge savings on the remainder of our 2018 F-150s with up to a $2,500 rebate and, yes, I said, and 0% for 60 months. Or how about 10000 off MSRP on a 2018 Edge? Or what about even 12000 off a 2018 Expedition? Wow, hurry, they won't last. So come see us today at 1100 East 30th or online at MidwestSuperstore.com. If your vacuum is on its last leg, Donna Pitts with the Bag Lady has more great news. Donna has bought out the inventory of another Panasonic dealer and is passing the incredible savings on to you. Panasonic vacuums are the standard for many. And right now, get a top-of-the-line Panasonic Performance vacuum for only $199.95. That's the lowest price on a new Panasonic vacuum Donna has ever offered. A new Panasonic vacuum delivered free for only $199.95. These prices won't last and neither will these vacuums. Call the bag lady at 663-4322 or text vacuums to just text it. 
Basketballs are bouncing and crowds are cheering. Your best offense during cold and flu season is a good defense. Drink plenty of liquids, get plenty of rest, and keep your hands sanitized. If a bug still manages to get you, Ashcraft Pharmacy, your local Health Mart pharmacy, has over-the-counter medications that can help. Or if you need a prescription, we offer free mail-out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! From Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson, and Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Welcome back again to the Greenhouse in Liberal, Kansas. Glenn Grimm will join by Double D, Darren Dunn, and a matchup that kind of been looking forward to this ball game ever since the loss to the Seward to see if the Blue Dragon ladies can regroup a little bit. Very seldom do you see a team kind of dwindle in the fourth quarter like we did. That happened that day, and all of a sudden, Seward just kind of kicked it up. The matchups weren't good. They kicked it up a notch and really took it to the Blue Dragons in that fourth quarter. Uh, other than that, Hutchinson had owned the first half of the game. Yeah, Blue Dragons were ahead by six at halftime, only scored 15 points in that second half. A lot of worsts came out of that game for the Blue Dragons, one of those being, like you just mentioned, only making a couple of shots in that fourth quarter. I think they made six field goals the entire course of that second half. So. You think this is a game that the Blue Dragons probably have circled as well since that happened to try to stay on track and get back to this game to make it be for that Jayhawk West title. Now, you go back and look at that game, the way I looked at it from where I was, I mean, obviously everybody sees it from a different vantage point from where they're at. It really did seem like the Blue Dragons were in control for the first half of that game. If you talk with the coaching staff, though, they really didn't feel like it was a good game throughout. They said they went back and watched the film, really didn't feel like the team was was getting the right looks they wanted out yeah, of turnovers, knocking down the shots yeah. even in the first half. So look for the Blue Dragons to try to get out to a little bit of a better start, even better than what we thought was a six-point lead earlier this year in the arena. Interesting in the rankings, of course, this is Austin Memphis' first uh, year as a head coach of the Saints. He's the eighth coach in Saint history. For five years, he was assistant of Gulf Coast State. And guess who's right behind Seward in the rankings? Gulf Coast State is who is behind the rankings at 20 and 4. So kind of interesting. He leads there to come to Liberal, and they come up with a pretty good, uh, a good team right here. So uh, uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see what takes place. We're about set for the starting lineups in uh, first of all the Star Spangled Banner. So we're going to take a uh, another two minute timeout. Let's hear some information from our fine sponsors, and we'll be back with more from Liberal Kansas Seward County. Saints the Greenhouse. We'll be back in two minutes. Your life is busy. Are you ready to open an account? Apply for a loan? Check your balances? Make a transfer? Deposit a check? Pay bills? With electronic banking from the first, you can now take care of all your many banking needs from the comfort of your home or office. Anytime, anywhere, 24-7. Visit fnbhutch.bank to get started. First National Bank of Hutchison, member FDIC, equal housing lender. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert Epp of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Burning Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shears, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Lowen Corporation, Hogwild Pit Barbecue, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholars ships. For over 15 years, Erickson Custom Building has designed, built, and remodeled homes and commercial projects in central Kansas. Whether you're looking to replace a deck, wanting to build an addition, or remodel your kitchen, our customers receive individualized attention, quality craftsmanship, and exceptional customer service from start to finish. Erickson Custom Building offers new construction and remodeling services in addition to commercial and insurance projects. Visit our website today at ericksoncustombldg.com. The Hutch Medicine Shop and the Hutch Blue Dragons have a lot in common. In addition to our logos both being blue, all three pharmacists at the Medicine Shop graduated from HCC. Rick Stone in 1984, Brent Bauman in 2001, and Lacey Stone in 2007. In fact, the Medicine Shop has employed over a dozen HCC students over the past 15 years who are now Kansas pharmacists. The Medicine Shop and the Blue Dragons working together as one team. Starting lineups coming your way right now at the greenhouse here in Liberal. Here's with the starting lineups. Here's our own voice of the PA voice. Here's Darren Dunn. 
And for the Blue Dragons, it's the starting lineup you've come to love with Abby Ogle at guard, the five foot eight freshman out of Baldwin City, Kansas, wearing number two. Tia Bradshaw, the five foot eight sophomore out of Dodge City, Kansas, at guard, wearing number twelve. Scored only five points the last time these two teams met, but scored fifteen in her last outing. Deja Day Roebuck out of Olathe, Kansas. This could be a big night for her career-wise as a Blue Dragon. She's a 5'11 sophomore out of Olathe, Kansas. Michaela Vanette, she's been red hot from outside the arc. Had at least a couple of three-pointers in her last few outings here for the Blue Dragons. In fact, eight straight multi-three-point games for Michaela Vanette, the 5'6 freshman out of St. Paul, Minnesota. And then finally, the 6'0 sophomore from Liberal, Kansas, number 32, Jada Mickens. For the Saints, celebrating their sophomores here this afternoon. We've been told there might be a little bit of a change in that starting lineup. I'm not so certain there is one. I'm going to start you off from the bottom of the list, the list and work my way up while I see if they confirm what we think we know. We know for sure the six foot three sophomore out of Mozambique, Carla Kovani, or number 42, is starting. Carolina Shadowska, the six foot freshman out of Poland. She'll start at forward. Sylvia Veloso, the five foot seven sophomore out of Mozambique. She'll start at guard. Scored 23 points last time she faced the Blue Dragons. Lexi Hernandez, the five foot six sophomore out of Canyon, Texas, at guard. And then confirmation on that starting guard, five foot seven freshman, also from Mozambique. See a few of those on that list, especially starters. That is the five foot seven freshman wearing number three, Akila. Muku Bakidi. She scored eight points the last time she faced the Blue Dragons. One problem for Muku Bakidi, she averages almost three turnovers per game. And I can confirm the starting line that says you have them. It's going to be Hernandez starting. Muku, Muku Bakidi as well is going to also start. Belusa is getting the nod. Also the young lady out of Poland and Cavani also getting the start for the Saints of Sewer. So they go with their standing starting lineups. It's something a lot of coaches are superstitious, even though it does come down to sophomore night, senior night. Uh, you still go with the same starters. Get the other ones in this game as soon as you can. Yeah, everybody looks at it a little bit differently, and you especially have to look at it much differently because this is not a game with a few games left to go. This is the game because the winner of this one takes that Jayhawk West title. Yeah, takes the title, gets a bye for the first round, and waits the winner of Cloud and Dodge. If the, the, the if you're the loser of this game, you take number two in the West, you're the number three seed, and you take on Allen County on Wednesday back home, either here in Seward or in Hutchison. With your play-by-play, play, here's Darren Dunn. It's the six foot three Kovani taking on the six foot Jada Mickens. Kovani and the Saints win the tip, and we'll have the first possession in this one underway here in the Liberal with the Jayhawk West title on the line. Shudwoska up high, guarded by Dejanay Roebuck. Shudwoska picks up her dribble, gets it off to Hernandez. Hernandez works the right wing, and Roebuck switched off and is now on Hernandez. Left side goes Veloso. Veloso inside, gets to the right block, and she walked to get there. That's the first turnover of the ball game, guarded closely by Abby Ogle. Yeah, came across on the angle across that. Many times you see that called and took a little extra step to get across the top. Saints only had 15 turnovers last time these two met. Dragons had 25. Dragons work right to left as you listen and as you watch on the Blue Dragon Sports Network. Turnover, Tia Bradshaw. Had it stripped away. Shudwoska goes out of the right side, guarded closely by Mickens. And forces one up top to Muku Bakidi to set up the offense. Veloso guarded by Tia Bradshaw. It's double screens high. Gives it off to Shudwoska, who rolled off the screen. Three-pointer no good. Battle for the offensive rebound. Kovani has it. Nearly has it stripped away at the left block. Now she does. Second turnover on the Saints. And as she stole it away, Abby Ogle was fouled by Sylvia Veloso. Quick foul call. Good hand. The heads up play by Abby Ogle to get to the ball, to hand it off. So she did not have possession of it and get called for the travel. She was did a good job of just getting into the ball. One minute gone, scoreless here in the greenhouse. Tia Bradshaw brings the ball across the timeline, guarded by Veloso. Goes right wing to Ogle. Ogle up top to Bradshaw. Now left wing to Mickens, looking inside. Bradshaw wanted it, didn't get it. Man-to-man defense put on by the Saints. Saints in the home whites. Ogle nearly has it stripped away by Hernandez and now loses it on the sideline. Second turnover by the Blue Dragons. Shudwoska the other way. Loops it up with the off hand on the left side. And Shudwoska puts the Saints on the board with the early 2-0 lead. Robux sets the screen for Bradshaw at half court. Didn't get enough of Veloso to prevent her from staying step by step. 
with Tia Bradshaw. Van Ett goes between the legs. First touch she's received here offensively for the Blue Dragons. Gets it back up top with nine to shoot. Right wing to Roebuck. Roebuck nearly had it stripped away. Now pulls up from 14 and knocks it down in the face of Carla Kovani. Nice job. With that, Roebuck is now on the top ten list for the Blue Dragons career list in not only scoring but also rebounding. Kovani working left block against Mickens. Picks it up high to that left elbow to Shudwoska. And Shudwoska was fouled by Dejanay Roebuck as she went up. That's a big one right there with 7.45 to go in the first quarter. We're tied right now, but picking up the first one, we need Roebuck to be able to play the entire game. Roebuck did not have a good game last time these two met. Only managed four points. Already has a quick foul early here. Shudwoska's first free throw is good. She scored all three for Seward. New video boards here at the greenhouse in LeBron. Pretty fancy. As soon as they make the point, it pops up with the Saint on the screen, and the name of the player who scored it. Shedwoska has all four for the Saints. It's a 4-2 contest here in the greenhouse. Saints with the early lead. Almost two and a half minutes gone by. Vanette nearly threw one away. It was tipped by Veloso. That's what Anshus says. Yeah, and he was the referee agreed with him. One did. The trail official started back the other end for the Seward side. And the Dragons will keep it on the near sideline. I saw Tom right away point that it was to the west. Yeah, the trail official did not. Tom had it correct the whole way. In down from Ogle all the way to the left block. From the sideline to the left block to Mickens. But Mickens had it blocked on the way up by Shudwalska. Battle for the rebound. And the foul goes against Abby Ogle of the Blue Dragons. We the second team foul against the Blue Dragons. So Ogle with one and now Roebuck with one. will be Saints basketball. They lead a 4-2. Seven and a half left here in this first quarter of action. Aaron Dunn and Glenn Grunwald alongside you on Country 102.9 and KWBW. Thanks for joining us on the Blue Dragon Sports Network as well. Battle inside for position. Kovani was working against Mickens, and Mickens held her in the paint for her first foul. Three early fouls on the Blue Dragons. Ogle, Roebuck, and Mickens each with one. Hernandez has to hurry to inbound, just does get it into Veloso. Veloso walks into her turnaround yeah. shot. Three turnovers for Seward. So three turnovers against the Saints early going, but they still lead to four to two. First quarter play, 7-13 to go. Bradshaw goes right side. Rest of the offense clears out to the left side of the floor. Roebuck brings it left wing. Man-to-man defense put on by the Saints. Ogle goes high inside to Roebuck, had it knocked away underneath. Three turnovers now for the Blue Dragons. Hernandez on the break across court to Muku Bakiti. And Muku Bakiti finishes on the left side of the board. And just like that, it is six to two. Four point lead for the Saints. Six and a half left here in the first quarter. Left wing three pointer up by Roebuck, no good. Pulled down by Kovani. And the Saints want to push it, at least for the moment. Started to set up some offense, and then Hernandez found a lane. Missed on the shot. Kovani the cleanup. Kovani not only the rebound, but puts it in for two. It's a situation similar to what Hutchison did to Seward back on the sports arena floor in that first quarter play and act matchup. Roebuck from the top for the three. No good again. Battle for the rebound. Mickens thought she had a chance at it, but it's pulled away by Veloso. Veloso ahead to Muku Bakiti. The nice move across Van Eck. And Muku Bakiti has scored four. That's enough. John Anches wants a timeout. The Dragons trail it here early, 10-2. to It's a 30-second timeout. We're back after this. Parking lots and driveways can be expensive to install. This is Derek Fees. Let APAC Kansas Shears Division help you properly maintain these investments. Patching, crack filling, sealing, and striping are just some of the services we provide. Call APAC today at 620-662-2112. Are you tired of your dusty or muddy driveway? APAC Kansas Shears Division is here to help. This is Derek Fees. Call us and ask us about our asphalt millings. If you are a do-it-yourselfer, arrange for pickup or delivery at your convenience. Call APAC today at 620-662-2112. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Blue Dragons trail it 10-2 early on with 5.56 to go in this first quarter of play. Big surge by the Saints. Dragons, more turnovers right now than points on the scoreboard. With four minutes and five seconds gone by. 
Eight-point lead for the Lady Saints. Manette works her way into the trap. She'll have it nearly stolen away. And Veloso, as she tried for the steal, had a foot on the sideline. So that bails the Blue Dragons out of a near turnover. Tia Bradshaw goes right side of the offense again. The rest of her teammates clear off to the left side of this front court formation. Manette gets the ball. Step back three. Got it. This was needed, and that's five in a row now. She had four for four the other night. Michaela Van Ett has eight straight multi-three-point games. And is one for one behind the arc to start this one. Cuts that lead in half. 10-5 now, Seward on top. Shedwoska wants to answer, can't get it to go. Tia Bradshaw the rebound. Just over five minutes to play here in the first. Bradshaw gets a little slip screen from Mickens. Got all the way into the paint. Nearly threw it away. Last touch, though, by the Saints, Shedwoska. Tiana Kimbrough will come in for the Blue Dragons. She will take the place of Jada Mickens. Mickens comes out with one foul. One of three Blue Dragons to have one foul in the early goings. Inbound from Bradshaw, baseline goes high to Roebuck. Bradshaw will receive it back and set up the offense with 15 to shoot. Looks inside, free throw line to Kimbrough. Kimbrough quickly out to Vanette. Vanette drives baseline. Nice. And Vanette puts it up for two. She has five. Sun Dragons with five unanswered points. Cut that lead back down a little bit. Dragons back within three. 4.45 left in the first. Novani working hard on the inside against the Blue Dragons. Roebuck. Roebuck now switches over to take Shudowoska. And it's Kimbrough on Kovani. It's in to shoot. Hernandez has the ball outside. Brings it into the paint. Nearly had it stripped away at the right block. But instead, the foul goes against Abby Ogle, her, her second. Se- yeah, that's her second. So very quickly you're going to see Milan Schimmel checking the ball game for the Blue Dragons. Schimmel will check in. She's a freshman out of Pendleton, Oregon. Hernandez, an 85% free throw shooter, knocks yeah. down the first. She's a good one. Five points for her. Schimmel's dad played baseball for Stanford University. Comes from a very athletic family. Hernandez, a chance to extend this lead to five. She does. 12 7 the lead now for the Saints. Four and a half left in the first. Three quarter court trap shown by the Saints. It's a 1 2 2 press. Bradshaw breaks it, gets into the paint. No one underneath but herself, so she'll take the layup. Bradshaw found the opening and scored it for two. Cuts the lead back to three. Saints on top here early in the greenhouse. Muku Bakiti goes inside to Kovani. Kovani, the nice turnaround bump fake, dribbled right by Kimbrough and laid it in for two. Now well, Kimbrough bit on the, on the little pump right there. She put her up, got her up off her toes a little bit and was an easy layup. Schimmel in the contest now, guarded by Hernandez. Goes right elbow, though, to Roebuck. Schimmel gets it back, brings it down left side. She's double teamed, gets it away to Bradshaw. Bradshaw splits two defenders, goes man-to-man against Kovani. Couldn't get it to go. Kimbrough, the offensive rebound. Her put back no good. And pulled away by the Saints, Veloso. She kicks ahead. Shudwoska in the far corner. Thought better of it. Went inside baseline. No good. Gets her own rebound. Nearly stole it away from Roebuck. Roebuck had just enough of it to draw the jump ball. Yeah, they they need to snatch that away and not even make it a question as to whose ball it was. Kind of got caught standing there a little bit. Shedwoska had time to go out of bounds, come back in, reestablish, and tie that ball up. Roebuck, as you mentioned, Glenn, didn't get it cleanly off the backboard. Then at the long three, right in the grill of Muku Bakiti, and that's nine straight multi-point three-pointer games yeah. for Van Ed. She's also six of over her last two games, six and six, I should say. There's a steal. Dragons a chance to tie it. Roebuck on the steal, blocked away at the right block by Shedwoska. Asian A. Roebuck had the beat on Shedwoska. Decided for the pump fake at the right block, and it gave Shedwoska enough time to close. My question is, why don't you just lay it up and in? But I think she maybe thought she could draw the foul in the end one. Did not get it. But does have possession of the ball. Less than three minutes now left in the first quarter. Dragons down by two with the ball. Quickly inside, Schimmel tried to find Mickens, but had it knocked away. Four turnovers now for Hutchinson. Veloso goes left side to Hernandez. Hernandez pulls it up at the free throw line. Kicks it back out. 
It's Guamba in there now for the Saints, and she finds a driving Kobani. Kobani puts it in. She has six. Four-point lead now for the Saints. Under two and a half. First quarter action here in Liberal. Dragons trying to cut back into this lead. Left wing to Vanette. Vanette, no one in the paint. Kimbrough works down to the left block now. It's in to shoot. Mickens is up with Vanette outside the three-point arc. Seven to shoot. Mapasua wants it. Gets it in the left corner. The three up. No good. Off the back iron. Offensive rebound, though, to Mickens. And the Dragons will set it up offensively. Ball goes again. Left corner to Mapasua. Mapasua yeah, walks probably. with it. And she's lucky. Had she not walked with it, she probably would have gotten the charge. She off. might have. Kind of bumped right into a defender on the baseline and bounced off over. Got called for the walk. And Mapasua, for the Blue Dragons, out of Queensland, Australia. She's had some injuries as of late. I was dealing with that clavicle. Mm-hmm. She's had a chance to play recently. On the other side, Vonda Kwamba is in. She's had some back problems. Was held out her last game against Northwest Tech, and Northwest Tech just as a precaution. But she's here in this one. Lexi Hernandez gets the ball three feet beyond the arc outside that left wing and knocks it down for her first three of the contest. She has five. The Saints are up by seven. A minute and a half left here in this first quarter. Left wing Schimmel goes up high now to Vanette. Vanette gives it back to Schimmel who drives to the free throw line. Kicks it out to Mapasua for three this time. No. Too long and barely grazed the back side of that rim. It's safe to say Mapasua is a little bit off here in the early going. Yeah, seven point deficit for the Blue Dragons. 19-12 with a minute and 18 to go. Saints came out firing away and they lead it right now by seven. And add to it here. Dragons have not come back this season for more than five points down. Down seven here early with just 60 ticks left in the first quarter. Kovani on the inside. Nice dish by Veloso. But Kimbrough blocked it away. Kovani got it back. Kovani went up again. And Kimbrough said no again. Mapasua splits two defenders. The layup is good. Big basket for Mapasua after failing to connect from the outside on a couple of attempts. 40 seconds left in the first quarter. Kwamba wants to drive. She does against Mickens. And Vonda Kwamba is on the board with two. Lead back to seven. 21-14. Saints on top of the Dragons. 28 seconds left in the first. And Mozambique puts a lot of players on this team. Mapasua goes right side, guarded by Green. Goes inside right block to Mickens, out quickly into that corner to Schimmel, and Schimmel for three from the corner. Nine seconds left for the Saints to put up one last shot. Veloso, directing traffic, takes the long three herself at the buzzer, no good. And that's how the first quarter will come to an end. Saints lead at 21-17 and Liberal. We're back in one minute. Tax reform impacts virtually every tax return this year. That means yours, too. If you're wondering what that means for you and your refund, but don't want to spend hours reading the tax code, head over to H&R Block. No one knows tax reform better than Block. Their tax pros will help you find every credit and deduction available so you get every dollar you deserve. Because wouldn't you rather spend more time thinking about what to do with your maximum refund and less time figuring out what a TCJA qualifying eligible dependent is? Hint, it's your kid. In person or online, Block has your back. Visit H&R Block in Hutchinson, Lyons, and Ellsworth. The Rothy family name has always been connected to serving the Hutchinson community. And you can expect the same kind of high-quality service when you visit Rothy Family Flooring. They believe you deserve to be treated like family. So they've invested in their own talented and trustworthy installers to lay your floors. No outside contractors will ever knock on your door if Rothy works for you. Let them show you their expansive selection of name brand flooring and trust your home to the best. Rothy Family Flooring, 325 North Main, Hutchinson. To 17, Saints on top at the end of one quarter of play. Blue Dragons shooting 46.7 percent on 7 out of 15 shooting, 8 out of 15 for the Saints, 53.3. The difference is that both at the foul strike for the Seward Saints are four for four. The Blue Dragons are three out of seven from outside the arc for 42 percent, but a three four point edge to the Saints as we start this second quarter of play. The Dragons five turnovers in that first quarter had 25 total last time these two teams met. The Dragons were down by as many as seven in that first half, or that first quarter, I should say. And in fact, officially, it was an eight-point lead. 
The Dragons, the farthest they've been down this season and won was five. That was against Neo Show. Seward starts the second quarter of play with the ball. We'll get a foul underneath. And actually, Kovani Ooh, gets the foul. Kovani. So there was that battle last time where Mickens came away with the foul. This time she got Kovani to not only commit the foul, but the fifth turnover on the Saints. Mickens reacts the same as if she's getting the, the foul called on her as it does when it goes her her direction. Of course, she's from Liberal, so she's looking for a, a good game tonight. Mapasua trying to go the distance and will turn the ball over on the baseline. Six turnovers now for Hutchinson. Lauren struggling a little bit, starting off. Got the three a little while ago. That is a good thing. Mapasua guards Kaitlin Green. She'll switch off now with Schimmel. Schimmel on green. Hernandez with the ball. Sarah Kramer in the contest for the Blue Dragons. Ball goes up top to green, and Hernandez will set up the offense momentarily, but instead, pull a long three from about 30 feet out right over the top of Dejanay Robach. Now you watch. She's got some range out there. Little thing, little little tiny young lady, five foot six out of Canyon, Texas, but she can drain some threes. 5'6", had to shoot it over 5'11", and Roebuck and did it. Ball goes down baseline to Kramer. Kramer from 13 just had it rattle out. Mickens for the rebound, but Mickens gets called for the foul on the offensive rebound attempt. That'll be her second, so Coach needs to make a change. She'll send Branshaw into the lineup. Hernandez is a 35.4% three-point shooter, 64 out of 181, but she's nailed two here today. That means she's going to miss her next six. <laughs> Getting Going all schwammy on us here this afternoon in Liberal, Kansas. We'll see if it works out that way. She looks pretty good in warm-ups, specifically from that spot she just hit from a few minutes ago, although she didn't have Dejanay Roebuck in her face in warm-ups. Three-pointer up and no good from Muku Bakini, but offensive rebound to the Saints. Green will get a three-point attempt. She's knocked to the ground by Bradshaw. No call. Shot is no good. The Saints come away with the rebound. 18 to shoot. Green goes all the way through the lane, looking a little bit like Allen Iverson, and lays it in for two. A minute and a half gone by here in the second quarter of action, and it's the Saints up 26-17, largest lead in the contest. Dragons turn it over. Lexi Hernandez wants to go all the way to the paint. Tried to split Schimmel and Vanette, but Vanette was able to knock it away at the last second. Vanette with a good job getting a hand off to knock it away with another two. Right now down by nine, largest lead of the afternoon, 8-16 to go in the second quarter. Inbound from the left side for Hernandez. Gets it into Muku Bakini, but she didn't get herself established before she came back in to receive the pass. It's six turnovers. Yep. Now for the Saints. They kicked it back to Hernandez, and like you said, she was not set as of yet, so a turnover there. Kaylin Green will guard Tia Bradshaw the full length of the court. Bradshaw hands off right side to Van Ep. Ball works its way around the horn. Comes back now up top to Kimbrough. No one in the paint for the Dragons. Bradshaw will go in. Now she has a cutting shimmel. Wide open Schimmel from the right side for two, and Milan has five. Yeah, nice job by Schimmel. Nice job of finding her little blocks right there, little give and go wide open. 26-19 the score. Saints on top. 7.40 left before halftime. One and three. It's another one for the Saints, and this one's from Kaylin Green. Green's capable from outside there as well. She's the 34.1% three-point shooter. Largest lead now up to 10 for the Saints, 29-19. Van Atten, the answer three, no, just off the front iron. Rebounded by Kaylin Green, here come the Saints. No problem pushing the floor. Hernandez, another long three, doesn't get this one to go. And Milan Schimmel pulls away the rebound. Saints defense settles in, not well enough. Wide open, Dejanay Roebuck on the left side, but she misses the bunny. And Shedwoska pulls down the rebound. Shedwoska goes against Roebuck. The shot goes in, but will not count. The foul came first. This foul goes against Tiana Kimbrough. Yeah, Kimbrough will pick up the personal. It'll be only her first. By the way, Ty Kimbrough, a sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee, transferred last year from Northwest Florida State, coming off an injury year last year. She guards on the inbound. More guarding Vonda Kwamba in the paint. Kwamba gets the entry pass. Kwamba against Kimbrough. Kimbrough got a piece of it. Enough to make Kwamba miss, and Kimbrough pulls down the rebound. Dragons trying to cut into this 10-point lead. Long three from Van Ett is no good. Good box out 
by Shadowowska on Dejanay Roebuck. Roebuck trots back. Kaitlin Green got the outlet, tried to force the issue, could not get the shot to go. And on the rebound, the foul goes against Bonda Kwamba of the Saints. Kwamba will pick up her first personal. It will only be the second against the team, so still a long ways from getting to the foul strike. But a 10-point difference, Saints on top, 29-19 over Hutchinson. Dragons raced out into foul trouble in that first quarter. Never got the Saints into the bonus, though. Had three fouls before four minutes had gone by. Did a good job of not fouling the rest of the way in that first quarter. 15 to shoot for the Dragons. Contested shot, turnaround on the inside for Roebuck. She can't get it to go. She gets up slowly in frustration. But on the other end, Muku Bakiti turns it over for the Saints. Dragons work it ahead. Inside Bradshaw. Bradshaw had it stuffed by Shadowoska. Much to the light of this Seward crowd. And Kaitlin Green goes left side. Got the body contact from Michaela Vanette. And Green will go to the line for two. Well, Green will go to the line where she's been already and knocked down a couple. First free throw is good. She has six on the afternoon. Green had a stellar performance against Northwest Tech. 15 points off the bench, including three for five from beyond the arc. Only had three points, though, the last time these two teams met. Second yeah. free throw is no good. Nice job on Hexner right there with a the miss. Dejane Roebuck pulls down the rebound. She'll get the pass. We'll start up the offense now for the Blue Dragons. Dragons in road reds, taking on the Saints in home whites. Shot up by Tia Bradshaw, contested through the paint, no good. Shadowska comes away with it and travels out of the Blue Dragon defense. That'll bring Michaela Johnson in off the bench for the Blue Dragons. Out of Crowley, Texas, she'll set in. Kimber will get a break. Got a media timeout on the men's game up in the Garden City. It is Garden City 22, Barton 12 at the media timeout. Dragons will inbound from the left baseline. Napasu in the honor. She's in there with Johnson, Roebuck, Vanette, and Schimmel. Vanette gets the entry pass. And the Dragons will work the ball up top. Schimmel guarded by Lexi Hernandez. And we'll have a hold away from the ball. We've seen a lot of that yep. on the Saints' end of the court. Now we see it on the Dragons' offensive end of the court. It was Shudwoska hanging on to Roebuck. Shudwoska picks up her first personal. Third team foul against the Lady Saints. Both teams with three fouls. The Saints on top by 11. Largest lead of this one for Seward. Vanette had the inbounds to Roebuck. Roebuck tried to give it back to Vanette, and Vanette had it go off her hip and out of bounds on the sideline. Turnover eight on Hutchinson. Roebuck with a little bit of a tough start here. She's going to have to pick it up. She's a better ball player than that. Had that tough game against the Saints in the sports arena as well, where she only scored four, but the Saints will turn this one over. They're giving them the favors, aren't they? They are. You see... One team do one thing, the other team, instead of taking advantage, decides to prove they can do the same as well and turning the ball over. Seward with nine points off turnovers in that first quarter of play. Lived off those points off turnovers in the sports arena as well. Big part of that second half explosion for the Saints. Schimmel gets the ball inside the right block. Had it knocked away by the much smaller Lexi Hernandez at 5'6". She starts the break. It finishes with a Kila Muku Bakiti. And Muku Bakuti has six. And they're getting in transition pretty easy after the Dragon turnover. So somewhere, Hutchinson's going to stop turning the ball over. Schimmel has the ball left wing, guarded by Hernandez. He's shown the quick hands. Hernandez, known for being a ball handler in this league. Ball goes inside, turnaround by Roebuck, no good. Tried to get it over the six-foot Shedewoska, and Shedewoska has been strong on the inside defensively. 32-19 the score. Seward Saints on top, 420 left before the break. Winner of this game will win the Jayhawk West title and get a first-round bye in postseason play. From the right side, Hernandez, 15-footer up and no good, rebounded by Michaela Johnson. Doesn't play many minutes, but can be effective when she's in there. Goes high and now low to Roebuck this time. Roebuck to turn around on Shudwoska. 
and Roebuck scores it for two. Well, that's Roebuck's game, the quick turnaround right there. She was getting a little frustrated. Maybe we should settle in a little bit. She easily could have eight or ten points right now. And for the first time, these two teams met and only three rebounds, so both facets of her game were closed out the first time these two teams play. Lexi Hernandez from straightaway 15, no good, rebounded by the Dragons. Trying to get this lead back down within 10. 32-21 at the moment with three and a half left here in the second quarter. Just under three and a half left. Schimmel goes left side, doesn't get the basket to go, but will get the foul and go to the line for two. Schimmel saw something. She saw a little opening on the left side, was able to sneak down on the left side, put it up strong, hoping maybe it would be contended with and go in, but missed it, but that's an opportunity at the line now, shooting two. Vonda Kwamba picks up her second personal. Schimmel goes to the line too strong on the first one. Already with a three-pointer here this afternoon. Michaela Van Ett, who has a couple, comes out. She gets the breather. Sarah Kramer comes in. So for the Dragons, it's Kramer, Mapasua, Schimmel at the line. Schimmel is 21, 20 out of 35 now in the season, makes the second one. Something maybe she needs to work on in the offseason coming up. Gives her six points, however. For the Dragons, dropping back defensively, it is Kramer. Tia Bradshaw just checked in. Dejanay Roebuck, Milan Schimmel, and Michaela Johnson. Johnson gets to guard Carla Kovani, the six foot three sophomore out of Mozambique. Of course, played on this team last year with her sister. Now she works against Johnson, gets the better of her, but can't finish. Gets her own rebound. Left block goes up against Roebuck, who came over to help. And there's no stopping Carla Kovani, who now has eight. Mia Bradshaw goes right corner to hand off to Schimmel. Dragons working the ball around the perimeter. Dejanay Roebuck got those feet going before the dribble. And it's turnover number nine for the Blue Dragons. That's trailing by 12, 2.51 to go in the second quarter of play. Guys game coming up at 6 p.m. Sylvia Veloso runs the point. One of the three players that normally start for this team out of Mozambique. Ball goes to Hernandez. Give it back to Veloso, guarded by Kramer. Tried to cross her over, but Kramer nearly stole the ball away. Saints have to track it down on the far sideline. Shadowoska from 19, no good, but another offensive rebound. This one's for Muku Bakidi, and she has eight. Two minutes and 15 seconds left before halftime. It's a 14-point advantage for the Saints of Seward. Dragons work the ball up high. It's Roebuck. In the paint right now is Johnson. Johnson goes and sets a high screen for Bradshaw. Bradshaw pulls up from 17, no good. But Johnson underneath with the offensive rebound. And she was fouled on the putback by Carla Govani. Good job by Michaela to get position just enough to get that offensive board. And she'll go to the line. She shoots 67, 63.6%, 35 out of 51 on the year. Had a foot in the boot a couple weeks ago. Did not play for a couple games. You could really tell the how in shape, not out of shape. Well, actually out of shape she was physically. Playing much better the last couple games. In her limited minutes, you're used to seeing her. You know, there's a game where she scores 10 points in only 12 minutes of play. Mm-hmm. She normally has a rebound every two minutes. And you're right. When she came back, she you struggled. weren't seeing it. And she wasn't as effective as she was before that. First free throw is good for Johnson. She had 10 rebounds against Northwest Kansas Tech in the fourth quarter alone. By the way, Northwest Kansas Tech eliminated from the playoffs with a loss to Dodge City today. Second free throw, no good, but the Dragons come away with the offensive rebound. How about a 15-footer from the right wing for Johnson? No. Rebounded by Shadwoska of the Saints. Minute 45 left before the break. 36-23. Seward on top of Hutchinson. Left-hand dribble into the lane for Veloso. Tried to pass it off to the right side, and it was kicked by the Blue Dragons. Tiana Kimbrough comes in for Hutchinson. Lexi Hernandez will go baseline to inbound for the Saints, and Johnson will come out. Cross screens in the paint. Hernandez at about a four count, just gets it in. Baseline to Veloso, working against Bradshaw. Kicks it out up high to Shudwoska. Shudwoska guarded by Dejanay Roebuck. Three seconds in the lane for Vonda Kwamba. And the Saints turn it over. Yeah, parked in there a little bit, long enough to have a weenie roast and little marshmallows. And <laughs> he was in there for a while. 
Once you, I mean, you can pitch the tent, but once you start uh-huh. heating up the fire. Once you start heating up the fire. They're, they're going to call that. Yeah. Minute 19 left here in the second quarter of action. Dragons trying to cut into this 13-point lead. Inside, left-handed shot, turnaround, no good for Roebuck. And she's struggling against Shadowoska. Shadowoska now offensively against Roebuck. Saints instead go left wing. And another foul away from the ball. Vicente of Kimbrough, let's check it. Yeah, it will work against Kimbrough. She was guarding Kwamba. Region gets started on next Wednesday, the 27. Top seeds on each side will get the home court advantage. The two conference winners will get both get buys. So on the women's side, Butler won the East. They get a buy, and they wait. The winner of Pratt, Neosho Coffeyville. Not sure Neosho Coffeyville tied up going into the today. They're actually going. Got to figure that one out. Saints get a fresh fresh 30, and on the inbound, Shadowska can't get the runner from 15. Dragons pull down the rebound under a minute now. Bradshaw knifes inside. Couldn't quite get the right-handed layup to go, but Roebuck will follow. And this time, Roebuck puts it through for two. She has six. Roebuck's going to have to shake. Having a tough time down low because they're going to need some points from her inside. Shedwoska has had her number, but that time she was able to get an offensive rebound and have Shedwoska away from her. Saints turn it over. Shot clock is dark. Dragons have 25 seconds to work with, and John Anshes wants to talk about it. 36-25 the score. Saints on top. We're back in 30 seconds. To anyone considering a change in family doctors or looking for an attentive primary care physician who's more concerned about you than your insurance, welcome to Prairie Star Health Center. We offer health care held to a higher standard with a choice of dedicated, compassionate physicians. Experience the difference you'll feel when you have a patient-centered medical home. Prairie Star Health Center, 30th and K61 in Hutchinson. Lady Blue Dragon Basketball on Company 102.9 KHCT in Hutchinson as well as KWW 1450 AM and 98.5 FM. On this Sunday, games were supposed to be played last night, but due to the blizzard conditions out in southwest Kansas, pushed off to the day. Same way with the Colby. Well, actually, Colby and Pratt played last night. Same way with the Dodge and Northwest Kansas Tech and Barton and Garden City. Here's Darren. Dragons have trailed by as many as 14 in this first half. A chance, though, to cut it. Under 10 as we head into halftime. Shot clock is dark. Dragons have 10 to shoot. We'll look to use most of this clock. Bradshaw has it left wing. Has Kimbrough on the inside against Shadowoska. But Vanette now has the ball 35 feet away from the basket. Two to shoot. She'll take the long three, and it's good. At the buzzer, Michaela Vanette knocks down her third three of the contest. She finishes the first half with 11, and the Dragons have cut it back within 10. 36, 20 acres scored at halftime. Seward on top. We're back in two minutes to crunch the numbers. We all like to save money when and where we can, right? You can do that every day at Salt City Pawn and Jewelry. Hi, this is owner Paul Phillips inviting you to stop in and say hi to our friendly staff. And while you're here, check out over 3,000 square feet of great merchandise priced at outstanding values. We don't have to offer huge sale prices for one day only when we do that on a daily basis. Save big over retail prices on firearms, electronics, guitars and amps, name brand tools, video games, jewelry, and more. See us at 916 East 4th and Hutch, just east of 4th and Severance. We're proud to be alumni and supporters of all Blue Dragon Athletics. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert F. of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Burning Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Lowen Corporation, Hog Wild Pit Barbecue, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholars this is Carter Fowle, president of Hutchinson Community College. I invite you to join us this winter as the proud tradition of Blue Dragon men's and women's basketball continues at the historic Hutchinson Sports Arena. Both teams are favorites in the tough Jayhawk Conference, so you won't want to miss any of the action. Find the schedule at BlueDragonSports.com, like us on Facebook, and follow Blue Dragon Sports on Twitter. As always, go Blue Dragons! 
Our cat is now part of a regional transportation partnership with Sedgwick County Transportation and Wichita Transit. We are working together to provide rides to Wichita and back on Tuesdays. Wichita Transit has fixed route and paratransit service available within the city. Round trip costs range between $19 and $27. Advanced registration with our cat is required. Our cat is first come first served general public transportation. Call 694-2913 for details. Well, the Blue Dragons have the Saints' percentage of shooting going in the right direction. However, Saints still lead at halftime, 36 to 28, 48, 43.8% shooting for the Saints. Well, the Blue Dragons are shooting 35.5 and had a better quarter in the first quarter with 46.7. It's time for the Medicine Shop in-game capsule brought to you by the Little White Castle at 14th and Main. All your pharmaceutical needs. Rich Stone and the gang do a great job. 14th and Main. You might have saw the throwback Thursday in the Hudson paper a couple weeks ago where they had a picture of the old service station back, back, way back when. Well, Rick's been the proprietor there for many, many years, and it turned into a pharmacy. What a special little place it is. You need flu shots. You need pneumonia shots. If you need the Shingrits vaccine for for shingles, they've got the new one out. It's a two-step approach. You've got to get a, a prescription from a physician. They'll do that for you. They'll call your physician, line it up. And they order the, the pharmaceutical for you, call it in. Lacey has the softest touch. It is still flu season out there, folks, so pay attention to that and think about uh, taking advantage of the medicine shop, no doubt about it. Let's look at the numbers real quick. Hutchison is led in scoring with total points with Michaela Vanette. Red Hot shooting three out of five from outside the arc. 11 points to her credit, four out of six overall. After that, it falls off into the single digits. Roebuck was six points, but she's three out of ten. She really has missed some bunnies inside. It could have made a big difference. Schemmel was six points, two points for Mapasua, and also two points for Bradshaw, one point for Michaela Johnson with the bounce drive as she came in. Hutchison shot four out of ten from outside the arc. They really kept them in this, Darren. They don't have those going for them, which primarily Michaela Van Ad along with Schemmel drilled, drained them. Those uh, three pointers, it would be a, a tough night right now. For the Saints of Seward, balanced scoring, eight points for a couple of different players. Also, Hernandez, Lexi Hernandez with eight. Uh, Shedlasco with uh, with eight points to her credit. And uh, again, a couple others with two. Uh, Bonda. Kwamba? Yeah, Kwamba. You told me how to say that earlier. Kwamba, Kwamba. Yeah. <laughs> and she has, Kwamba has uh, two points in the halftime. The biggest difference is three out of nine shooting, knocking down threes. Two out of three is Alexia Hernandez. She's doing the bulk of it. Turnovers, Blue Dragons with 10, the Saints with 11. Saints in the last couple minutes had a bunch of turnovers, but Hutchinson has not been able to garner as many points off. But Seward with 16 points off for turnovers compared to the Blue Dragons with five. So Hutchinson overall has got to take care of the basketball. There's no doubt about that. they got to shoot a little bit better. Got to get it inside. They're getting it inside, Darren, just not able to get something finished inside. And the Saints having something to do with that. Well, the big matchup we've been talking about is the five foot eleven Dejanay Roebuck against the six foot Carolina Shedwoska. And Shedwoska, for whatever reason, every time Dejanay has had to try to turn around against her, that's where a lot of her misses have come. Those makes, a lot of those have come from putbacks. There was one time in that first half, she put on the move she wanted against Shudwoska and was able to finish. But more often than not, Shudwoska is winning that battle on the defensive end of things. Unfortunate for the Blue Dragons. Yeah, she's also got seven boards to go along with those uh, four points that she has. Uh, uh, Mukudi Makiti also with eight points in the first half on four out of five shooting. That is your medicine shop in game castle. Brought to you by the Little White Castle at 14th and Main in Hudson. Give him a call. Rick's a great supporter of Blue Dragon Athletics, as he has been all year long. And they can take care of your pharmaceutical needs. They'll transfer you from another pharmacy if you want. And also, don't forget, they do deliver. The Medicine Shop, 14th and Main in Hutchinson. That is your Medicine Shop in-game capsule. We're going to take a two-minute timeout, take a look at the bracket, see what's going on also in those three other games, in which the, a couple of the women's have already been decided. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more from the Greenhouse in Seward in Liberal right after this two-minute timeout. No time to fix breakfast? Just call us at Anchor Away 662-3100 and we'll have it ready for you. Choose from our selection of breakfast burritos, biscuits, or one of our five different complete breakfast plates. Breakfast from 7 to 10.30, Monday through Saturday. If you missed us for breakfast, we're here for lunch and dinner, too. Pick up your favorite Mexican dinner or take some home for the family. We're open till 9. That's Anchor Away, drive through Carryout, and Catering under the Water Tower at B&Adams in Hutchinson, 662-3100. 
If getting a new iPhone is on your wish list, then wish no further. At Next Tech Wireless, all smartphones, including the new iPhones, are 50% off. You can save over $350 on your new iPhone and even trade in your old phone for more credit. Have multiple lines? That's even better because your third, fourth, or even fifth line will get you unlimited data free for a year. Next Tech Wireless has more than 50 store locations to serve you. Switch today and start saving. Certain restrictions apply. Phone guard required. Hi, Brian Bobo, General Manager at Midwest Superstores. One huge question. Do you know how many pre-owned vehicles we have available? It's over 500 available in our huge inventory. We share our inventory with our other four locations. So if you see something at MidwestSuperstore.com online and want us to bring it in for you, we will at no charge. Unlike the big city chains, we bring it in at no charge. So come out and see us today at 1100 East 30th or online at MidwestSuperstore.com. If your vacuum is on its last leg, Donna Pitzer, the bag lady, has more great news. Donna has bought out the inventory of another Panasonic dealer and is passing the incredible savings on to you. Panasonic vacuums are the standard for many, and right now, get a top-of-the-line Panasonic Performance vacuum for only $199.95. That's the lowest price on a new Panasonic vacuum Donna has ever offered. A new Panasonic vacuum delivered free for only $199.95. These prices won't last, and neither will these vacuums. Call the bag lady at 663-4322 or text vacuum to just text it. Welcome back to the greenhouse in the liberal Kansas. Glenn Rumble along with Darren Dunn. We're dragging basketball all season long on Hutchinson Country Station, Country 102.9 KHET in Hutchinson, as well as KWBW, 1450 AM and 98.5 FM. is also on the streams for both of those stations and also streaming in the video for the Blue Dragon Sports Network. So glad to have you along in the women's side. A couple things need to be decided. Neosho and Coffeeville in the East are both tied for basically fifth place with a six and fourteen. Darren and I have time to look heat and see how they did head to head. That could be decided right now. Butler's number one, Cali's number two, Indy's number three, and Cloud's number four on the West. This game will decide the number one seed of the whole tournament. Whoever wins this game, the loser will get the number three seed and more than likely take on. Uh, on the in the first round of the women's would pro- more than likely take on Allen County, and would take on Allen County because that's already been decided. Northwest Kansas Tech with their loss today, fall to two and nineteen in the women's side. They are eliminated because there's one extra team in the West, and uh, they are done right now. Dot City, uh, the bo- the men are trailing Northwest Kansas Tech, and when you look at that one, that has some pretty good implications. Although Dot City, they're also finished. They will not play in the men's side. So Northwest Kansas Tech, though, could honestly uh, make a little bit of a run and see what happens there. But Garden City has a lot to play for. Barton's got back in that game on the men's side. I still trail the Broncosters up in Garden City, but there's a lot on the line that comes down to the very last game. Seeding's pretty important. You, you want to be able to have home court advantage if you possibly can, but with the parity in the league, what's your thoughts on, on what might happen there? It's scary. Well, it's scary that you pulled that word right out of my head because that's what I was going to go for was the parity. I mean, when you are the schedulers of this league and you look at these games, number one, how great is it that you have the Jayhawk West title come down to the very last game of the season? So you're patting yourself on the back right there knowing that you've got this battle between the Blue Dragons and the Saints on the women's side here today. And number two, yeah, a lot of it comes down to these final games of the season to figure out who goes where. And you really can't do that without parity in the league where you have all these teams. Now, there's not necessarily two or three that are head and shoulders above everyone else, but you get this mix to where any given night or any given afternoon, as the case may be here this afternoon on a Sunday in Liberal, that one team could come up big against another team. Well, Don City and Don, and Garden, both on the women's side, end up tied at 9-12 and 12 because the Garden City lost to the Cougars this afternoon, 70-63, to 63, and the Don City win over the Northwest Kansas Tech team. But Dodge will get the number five seed even though they're tied, and that puts uh, Dodge City traveling to Cloud coming up on Wednesday. And then Garden City will travel to Indy coming up on Wednesday as, as well. So that that bottom half of the of the west side is filled out now. We don't know about the bottom half of the east side as of yet, and a lot has to do to determine with this next half hour here whether the Blue Dragons can get back in this and, and do something that. I honestly believe that they can because of the turnovers they had. They started to get the ship right a little bit. Van Eck continues to shoot well from outside, but Roebuck and Mickens and Kimbrough have got to do something from the inside, and then also Abby Ogle's got to, got to produce a little bit here. Well, you've got to cut off those offensive rebounds that you've given up now 
to the Saints. Eight offensive rebounds led to eight points in that first half, eight extra points that that team should not have had. And then also those um, offensive turnovers, the points off of turnovers, 16, 11 more than the Dragons had for the Saints in that first half of play. So we mentioned the, the offensive rebound, first of all, but also getting up and down the court. Glenn, you mentioned it in the first half, how quickly Seward was getting down yeah, on that they're getting in transition, end. yep. And that transition game has kind of been hurting the Dragons, especially when a lot of Dragons are still you know, sulking about a missed shot on that offensive end of their own, and they're 90 feet away from the play. The national ranking, similar to how it is on the guy side, there's a slug of Florida teams, and you got to believe that they're going to maybe get three teams. They might get their, their allotment from Florida plus a t- couple of at-larges because you look at Gulf Coast State, they're number three. There's only one more poll, and it comes out this next Tuesday. So none of the postseason play plays into it at all. That possibly into the into the rankings, but it might play into how strong you finish within your region regarding an at-large or not. you kind of got to believe with Hutchinson with only one loss, should they stub their toe here and maybe even again up in region, but with with three losses, there's a good chance that they're going to get in. But you look at Gulf Coast, they're number, uh, number three with four losses, but that's because of the strength of that schedule. South Plains set with two losses at number four. Trinity with two losses at number five. Then Hutchinson at number six. Northwest Florida State, 22 and three at number seven. You got Tyler, 23 and three at number eight. Tallahassee, 23 and five at number nine. Florida Southwest State, 26 and two at number 11. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? A whole bunch right there. We're going to take a two-minute timeout. Second half just around the corner. Darren will have the call. We'll be back with more from the greenhouse in Liberal right after this two-minute timeout. Basketballs are bouncing and crowds are cheering. Your best offense during cold and flu season is a good defense. Drink plenty of liquids, get plenty of rest, and keep your hands sanitized. If a bug still manages to get you, Ashcraft Pharmacy, your local Health Mart pharmacy, has over-the-counter medications that can help. Or if you need a prescription, we offer free mail-out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! From Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson, and Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Your life is busy. Are you ready to open an account? Apply for a loan? Check your balances? Make a transfer? Deposit a check? Pay bills? With electronic banking from the first, you can now take care of all your many banking needs from the comfort of your home or office. Anytime, anywhere, 24-7, visit fnbhutch.bank to get started. First National Bank of Hutchinson, member FDIC, equal housing lender. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert F. of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Vernon Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Lowen Corporation, Hogwild Pit Barbecue, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholarships. For over 15 years, Erickson Custom Building has designed, built, and remodeled homes and commercial projects in central Kansas. Whether you're looking to replace a deck, wanting to build an addition, or remodel your kitchen, our customers receive individualized attention, quality craftsmanship, and exceptional customer service from start to finish. Erickson Custom Building offers new construction and remodeling services in addition to commercial and insurance projects. Visit our website today at ericksoncustombldg.com. Well, it's time for the second half for the go to the second half with Liberal and Hutchison. The Seward and Hutchison matched up. Here's Darren Dunn. Dragons gave up a couple of opponent highs in that first half. First quarter points, 21. Seward County had the previous high of 20 earlier this year against the Dragons. And first half points was set by Neosho County with 35 back in December. The Saints finished that first half with 36. 36-28 your score to open up the second half of action. As the Blue Dragons go offensively with Ogle, Mickens, Bradshaw, Roebuck, and Vanette. It's Ogle on the inside. First shot up and no good. Got her own rebound. Put back a tip. Not there. And Carla Covani pulls the ball down for the Saints. Dragons got a much-needed three-pointer at the buzzer in that first half from Michaela Vanette to cut this lead to eight. It's the third three-pointer this game by Vanette. Covani, the turnaround on the inside. Yeah, got, a no break, good. got a break right there. Pulled down by Mickens, and here come the Blue Dragons. Roebuck wants it on the inside. Dragons don't go there. 
but it is Roebuck now. The high entry pass to get it past Shudwoska, and Roebuck scores it from the right side. We did a good job of using her body to shield away and get some room between the basket and her defender, and got it up and in. Perfect entry pass over the top of the six-foot Shudwoska, and now the Dragons come up with a a steal. Twelve turnovers now for the Saints, and the Dragons are within six. Just over a minute gone by in this third quarter. Mickens goes right block and draws the foul on Shadowoska. Second now on Carolina. Well, you can see already they're going to take it inside on Shadowoska. Trying to get her into foul trouble. That hurts her second already. Dragons had eight fewer points in the paint than the Saints in that first half. Trying to make the most of it early here in this third quarter of action. First free throw is good for Mickens, and she's finally on the board. Liberal native wants to do well here. Dribbles the ball, spins it in her hands, and knocks down the second free throw. She's a good free throw shooter, 81.4% coming into the game. Dragons once trailed this game by 14. Now the Blue Dragons within four at 36-32. Saints on top. Almost a minute and a half gone by here in the third quarter of action. Darren Dunn and Glenn Grunwald alongside you. As Lexi Hernandez goes on the inside, Mickens says no thank you, knocks the ball away. Ooh. The officials will get together and decide the Dragons were the last to touch it. I think Ashley, the Dragons, Bradshaw might have been able to get to it. She thought it was going to be off the Saints. Nonetheless, it will be Saints basketball. Hernandez will inbound from the right block. Man, the Saints take three to four seconds to inbound every time. and almost have to force it in last second on those baseline inbounds. The shot up by Shadwoska, no good. Ogle getting the ball across the timeline, takes the foul from Sylvia Veloso. Yeah, Veloso reaching in at half court. It's one of those ones that will drive Uston Melford, Melford crazy over there. Four Saints now with two fouls. Veloso, Kwamba, Shadwoska, and Kovani. Dragons work offensively. Trying to cut now into this four-point lead. Micken sets the screen at the free throw line, steps out to take the pass, goes right side to Bradshaw, Bradshaw to the inside, has a foot stuck in the lane, but able to get rid of it as the crowd wanted the three-second call. Bradshaw now just left of center, three no good. Offensive rebound by Mickens. Mickens powers through Lexi Hernandez, and Nixon put, Mickens puts it in for two. Oh, she called the step ladder underneath to go up and get that rebound, and we got ourselves a ball game right now. 36-34, Dragons trailer, but coming back, a 30-second timeout. We'll take a break. We'll be back in a half a minute. The Hutch Medicine Shop and the Hutch Blue Dragons have a lot in common. In addition to our logos both being blue, all three pharmacists at the medicine shop graduated from HCC. Rick Stone in 1984, Brent Bellman in 2001, and Lacey Stone in 2007. In fact, the medicine shop has employed over a dozen HCC students over the past 15 years who are now Kansas pharmacists. The medicine shop and the Blue Dragons working together as one team. Well, Glenn, Glenn Drummond along with Darren Dunn. Glad to have you along on the Blue Dragon Sports Network, as well as on Country 102.9 KHUT Hutchinson and KWW in Hutchinson as well. And downing will be Hernandez for the Saints. 9-0 run if you go back to that three-pointer that Vanette hit to end the first half of action. And the Blue Dragons, once down by 14, now within two. Saints go inside to Kovani. Kovani runs across the lane against Mickens. Throws it high off the backboard, no good. Gets her own rebound, so it's an offensive rebound number nine for the Saints. And the putback, the foul goes against Mickens, her third. Now John's going to have to do something right there with three. He needs Mickens in there because she's kind of lighting the fire a little bit. A lot of uh, Dragon fans thought that Cavani might have traveled a little bit across the lane. Sure looked like it from here, but yet we are far away from the action. First free throw too strong. I can tell you this. She basically took her two steps. It took her from one side of the lane to the other. In fact, almost maybe a foot outside the other side of the lane. Those were long striding steps for the six foot three Kovani who connects on her second free throw. Yeah, she split the two. Nine points for her. Dragons will work against full court pressure. Dragons break it. Two on two opportunity for Ogle. Backing it down against Muku Bakiti. Makes better of it. The Dragons will set it up. Goes up top to Bradshaw. Bradshaw able to get inside. Layup too high and too strong. And the Saints come away with it. Lexi Hernandez works on the right side for the Saints. Ogle knocks one away momentarily from Muku Bakiti. She'll go into the backcourt. 
and bring it back across the timeline. Luku Bakiti gets a half-hearted screen from Kovani. Eight to shoot for Hernandez. Now at the top of the arc. Goes inside against Van Ad. Gets the help defense from Mickens. Walked away to Kovani with one to shoot. We're going to get a shot clock violation, but before we do, Bradshaw possesses it. A nice crossover step to get past Beloso, and this time Bradshaw puts it in for two. Yeah, she was careful to take a little bit off of that one last time, and she missed a little bunny a little while ago. That time she pulls the Reds within one. That's right back in it. Faked Beloso out as if she was going a little bit more to her right. Brought it back to the left to score it. And now with the Dragons within one, Jada Mickens draws another offensive foul underneath the basket. It goes against Carla Kovani, her third. That one is big right there. Gives the Blue Dragons the ball. The trailing at 37-36. The Dragons once trailed this one by 14. Now with six and a half left in the third. Have a chance to take the lead. Coach On just rolled into the ice a little bit with Mickens with three fouls still out there. Cavani stays out there as well with three fouls. Cavani works against Roebuck on that left block. Ball goes high to Van for three. You betcha. Van Nett has her fourth three of the contest. Ah, she tickles the twine from the top of the key this time. Hutch up by a couple. Nine straight multi-three-pointer games for Michaela Van Nett. And the Dragons are up by two with four minutes gone in the third. Veloso against Ogle. Forces one up, no good. Pulled down by Mickens. Dragons a chance to add to the lead. Bradshaw ahead to Roebuck. Roebuck finishes with the left-handed layup against Wamba. And Austin Medford has had enough. The Dragons are now up four. This is a full timeout with 547 left in the third quarter. Parking lots and driveways can be expensive to install. This is Derek Fees. Let APAC Kansas Shears Division help you properly maintain these investments. Patching, crack filling, sealing, and striping are just some of the services we provide. Call APAC today at 620-662-2112. Are you tired of your dusty or muddy driveway? APAC Kansas Shears Division is here to help. This is Derek Fees. Call us and ask us about our asphalt millings. If you are do-it-yourselfer, arrange for pickup or delivery at your convenience. Call APAC today at 620-662-2112. Tax reform impacts virtually every tax return this year. That means yours, too. If you're wondering what that means for you and your refund, but don't want to spend hours reading the tax code, head over to H&R Block. No one knows tax reform better than Block. Their tax pros will help you find every credit and deduction available, so you get every dollar you deserve. Because wouldn't you rather spend more time thinking about what to do with your maximum refund and less time figuring out what a TCJA qualifying eligible dependent is? Hint, it's your kid, in person or online. Block has your back. Visit H&R Block in Hutchinson, Lions, and Ellsworth. Little Blue Dragons, two sophomores and a freshman leading the charge. Bradshaw with a couple baskets. Also, Roebuck getting into the action. She's in double figures with 10. And then Van Ant, red hot for the top of the key, knocking down the three. And all of a sudden, a big run by the Blue Dragons says, give them a little opportunity here in the third. You go back to that buzzer-beating three by Van Ant to close out the first half. This is a 16-1 to run for the Blue Dragons to take this lead against the Saints. And Roebuck with that last basket. She becomes a member of the 900 club. She scored 900 points now and is number eight all time in Blue Dragon history. She's in the top 10 for not only the scoring points category, but also the rebounding category. Only the fifth player in Blue Dragon history to be a part of both. Saints want to try to answer with the three. Kaylin Green from the left wing, no good. And the Dragons have a chance to extend this four point lead with four and a half gone by in the third. Bradshaw. Got inside the paint again, but just had that layup roll off the no, limb. No good. Set up there and spun, Darren. Veloso wants to go against Bradshaw. Dishes it off last second to Kobani. And Kobani breaks the field goal drought for the Saints. That's the Saints' first field goal since 2.23 left in the first half. Roebuck from 12 on the right baseline. No good. And the Saints have a chance to tie or take the lead back. Lexi Hernandez got inside to that right block. And from behind, Abby Ogle able to swat it harmlessly out of bounds. Yeah, nice job by Ogle. Here comes Mapasu into the lineup. Same thing with Schemmel. She's checking in. Also, Kimbrough will check in. A good job by these young ladies out there. Ogle and also Mickens will take a break. Getting another break also is Bradshaw. Mapasua, Roebuck, Kimbrough, Schimmel, and Vanette in there defensively for the Blue Dragons. 
Saints go up high to Veloso. She wants to work immediately against Mapasua. Almost deja vu as she slipped it off to Kovani at the last second. Kovani couldn't get it to go, but the offensive rebound to Kwamba. And Kwamba is fouled by Kimbro on the way back up. Yeah, Kwamba will go to the line. Kimbro just picked up her third. That's pretty big as well. You need Kimbro in there. You either have to have Kimbro in there or Mickens in there, both with three. First trip to the line for Vonda Kwamba. Nice rotation and nothing but the bottom of the net on the first one. Her third point. Chance to tie here with her second free throw. And it's too strong. Manette gets the rebound. Dragons lead at 41-40. 4-41 left here in the third quarter of action. Darren Dunn and Glenn Grunwald with you on Hutchinson's Country Station. Country 102.9 KHUT. And KWBW, 1450 AM and 98.5 FM. Roebuck takes it. Napasua nearly had it stolen away. Roebuck had to come up and get it. First shot no good, but rebound by Tiana Kimbrough. And Kimbrough puts it in for her first basket. Dragons lead it as the Saints turn it over. 13 turnovers now for the Saints. Dragons up 43-40 with 4.13 left in the third. Yeah, Hernandez turning it over. Nice job by Van Eck on top of Hernandez. Hernandez usually so careful with the ball. Number five in the league, assist to turnover ratio. Runner for Van Eck on the inside, no good. Got her own rebound. She was too close, Darren. Within about six feet, not her range. She's farther out. She's got to be 21 feet and beyond. As the Dragons find Mapasua on the right block. Had it blocked away by Kwamba. And the Saints go the other end. Saints working right to left from the baseline. 13-footer is up and good for Lexi Hernandez. She's in double digits. Ten points now for Lexi Hernandez. Dragons still on top by one. Three and a half left in the third. Second half is where the Dragons struggled in the arena, but having no problems here in this third quarter of play in the greenhouse. Nice cut by Schimmel. Roebuck found her, and Schimmel finishes on the left side. Yeah, a little lefty puts it up and in. Three-point lead again for the Blue Dragons. Eight points for Milan Schimmel. Lexi Hernandez runs the point. She'll set a screen against Roebuck, trying to get Kwamba open. Kwamba goes left baseline. Got too far under the basket. Couldn't loop it up, but Govani is there to clean it up. And Govani, not only the offensive rebound, but two more points. 13 now for Carla Govani. Dragons up 45-44. Manette for three. Left it short. Rebounded away by Veloso. Ahead to Lexi Hernandez on the right wing. Pulls up against Schimmel, and now will work the offense. Kovani on the right block. Kwamba wants to drive it. Kwamba does. And Kwamba puts the Saints back on top by one. Nice job on that left side. She has five points in the contest. Just under two and a half to go in the third. The Dragons had gotten that lead back up by as many as four. And now Kimbro turns it over at the right elbow. Saints, a chance to add now to this one-point advantage. On the inside, Veloso had it knocked away. But the officials will call the foul against Lauren Mapasua. Mapasua will pick it up. She's got him to give, but that will send Sewer to the line. First trip for Veloso. Had 23 points against the Dragons last time these two met. Has yet to score in this contest. Rare for her. She averages almost 15, had 13. Yeah, she's a 71, West Tech. 71% free throw shooter and misses on that attempt. Jada Mickens with three fouls. We'll check in for Dejanay Roebuck. Roebuck now part of the 900 club for the Blue Dragons. Tia Bradshaw will check in momentarily as well. She does for Lauren Mapasua. Hutchison used that 16 to 1 run here in the third to take the lead, but Saints with a nice job of answering back. Kayla Johnson checks in too. How do you like the strategy there by John Hutchison to sub one at a time? Mm hmm. And try to close off a little bit of this momentum at the Saints half. Free throw, second one is good by Veloso. Her first point of the contest. Dragons have shut her down offensively so far. She tries to get the defensive steal against Bradshaw, but Bradshaw hangs on to it. Two minutes left in the third quarter. Dragons down by two. Go inside to Mickens. Mickens to turn around no good, but Vonda Kwamba is called for the foul. That'll be her third. 
So two saints with 3,000 apiece, one dragon, actually two dragons with Kimbrough with 3,000, Mickens with three. At the line will be Mickens. Mickens three for three now from the line as the first one goes. She has five. We failed to talk about Keely Tenney with the concussion is out for her second straight game. She told me she hopes to be back next Thursday to be cleared by then. Second free throw for Mickens. Glances off the front of the rim. Went over the top, touched the back of the rim, and came back out. So Mickens can't tie the game up here in the third quarter with a minute 45 left. 47-46, Saints on top. Darren Dunn and Glenn Grunwald alongside you. Long three foot up, no good by Kwamba. Off the backboard and off the front of the rim. Dragons pull it down with a chance to take the lead, but Vanette has it stolen away at half court. And Sylvia Veloso has her first field goal of the game on the easy lay-in. Veloso had 23 in the last meeting between these two clubs. Right now she has three, but that was a big steal to put them up by three. Dragons down 49-46. Minute 13 left in the third. Johnson goes to work in the paint on the spin around. Had it stripped away and out of bounds. Last touch by the Saints. Sarah Kramer checks in for the Blue Dragons. Carolina Shudowoska will check in for the Saints. And with her is Akila Mukubakiti. Huge home crowd this afternoon in the Liberal, yeah, there was a snowstorm yesterday. With the baseball team not here, they weren't expecting the crowd to be very loud, but the crowd that is here, obviously expressing their displeasure on that call. Dragons with 10 to shoot. Bradshaw pulls it out 35 feet away. 8 to shoot. Guarded by Green. Gets the screen from Mickens. Able to pull up from 16. No good. Well too long. Drew the back side of the backboard, but drew no rim. She had a good look, too. Got the nice screen from Mickens to get her a little bit of space. Couldn't knock it down. Shadowoska back into the contest. Guarded by Johnson. Shadowoska nearly throws it away. It was touched by Schimmel, and the officials will say Schimmel was the last to touch it on the far sideline. Schimmel did get a hand on it, but also thought it might have went off the sewer player. But again, you and I are the farthest away from anybody else in this building. Far sideline, Muku Bakiti. Goes right elbow to Kovani, and with 10 to shoot, Green is backing it out. Gets a screen from Shedwalska, wants to go left hand, layup no good. Offensive rebound, Kovani. Kovani the putback no good, and pulled down by Michaela Johnson. Titans Kramer in the lineup for the Blue Dragons right now. Johnson also back in there because you just called out her name at the rebound. Shot clock's dark there. 14 to shoot for the Dragons. A chance to cut this lead back to one or tie it. Going into the fourth quarter of action. Dragons were down by as many as 14. Have led by as many as four here in this third quarter. But turn it over. One second to shoot. Other end. And what a momentum changer as Luku Bakini puts it in at the buzzer to extend this advantage for the Saints. That's how the third quarter comes to an end. The Saints that had 51-46 were back in one minute. The Rookie family name has always been connected to serving the Hutchinson community. And you can expect the same kind of high-quality service when you visit Rookie Family Flooring. They believe you deserve to be treated like family. So they've invested in their own talented and trustworthy installers to lay your floors. No outside contractors will ever knock on your door if Rothy works for you. Let them show you their expansive selection of name brand flooring and trust your home to the best. Rothy Family Flooring, 325 North Main, Hutchinson. To anyone considering a change in family doctors or looking for an attentive primary care physician who's more concerned about you than your insurance, welcome to Prairie Star Health Center. We offer health care held to a higher standard with a choice of dedicated, compassionate physicians. Experience the difference you'll feel when you have a patient-centered medical home. Prairie Star Health Center, 30th and K61 in Hutchinson. Well, the shooting's pretty doggone close in the ball game. 37.5% for the Blue Dragons, 39.6.2% for Seward. Makes up for the five-point difference. Lady Saints trail the Blue Dragons, but Saints won a little run, got the lead back, and extended from five to the layup by Green right at the end of the third period of play. That's the need to keep that from happening. It's still a two-possession game. Seward fall as we start this fourth quarter of play, Darren. 
Dragons down by as many as 14 in this one. Win on that 16-1 run at the tail end, actually at the buzzer, to go into halftime and then to open up the third. Built a four-point advantage before Seward turned it back on, and Seward a chance to keep it going. Three-pointer by Green, no good. Rebounded by Carla Kobani. That is the 16th offensive rebound for the Saints. 14 second chance points for Seward, and Kovani has 15 yeah, in the afternoon. She had seven in the last meeting against the Blue Dragons. 53 46. Saints back on top by seven, just 30 seconds into the fourth quarter of play. Tia Bradshaw, Asian A. Roebuck, Sarah Kramer, Milan Schimmel, Jada Mickens in there for the Blue Dragons. Seven to shoot for Schimmel, who just got the ball away from the half court line. Now inside from 15, nearly has it knocked away. She's battling for it with Muku Bakidi, and the Dragons will suffer a shot clock violation. That's tough. Turnover number 14. They were kind of doomed when you described that Schemmel had just got away from half court. They had to make something happen, was not able to. They will substitute Bannett quickly back into the lineup along with Ogle and Bradshaw. Saints. Trying to add to this seven-point lead. A minute gone by here in the fourth quarter of action. Hernandez over to Muku Bakidi, who works against Ogle, and some elbow shoving going on. Ogle. This foul goes against Abby Ogle, her third. So three different Dragons with three fouls each on them, and 9 one to go in here in the ball game. A couple of Saints with three fouls as well. Giovanni and Kwamba. Kovani is in there. She receives the entry pass. Going to work against Mickens. It's a one-on-one -on -one post battle. Shot no good. Pulled away by Dejan A. Roebuck. Dragons now work offensively left to right as you listen and as you watch on the Blue Dragon Sports Network. Mickens is working inside against Shudowoska. Doesn't receive the ball. Now she wants to know what the offensive play is called. Roebuck pulls it away. Ogle now up high, 35 feet away from the basket. Dragons with eight to shoot. Ball goes right wing to Bradshaw. Bradshaw puts it on the floor. And Kaylin Green got caught with her hand in the cookie jar. Kaylin Green, her first. Team first. Now Green, only her first, so not done her too much. Team fouls a piece, one a piece on each one. Dragons in the greenhouse. Trailed by 14. Up by as many as four. Trying to cut into this seven-point lead from the Saints. And from the corner... Abby Ogle, the air ball, she has struggled her last four games from three. Lexi Hernandez shoots up a three from the left wing, no good, but Carla Covani pulls down the rebound. Loses the ball momentarily. Van Eck goes to the floor with Hernandez and will have a jump ball. It'll be Hutchison basketball. Covani is killing the Blue Dragons with the defensive boards in this last half of play. 17 offensive rebounds for the Saints. She's got a double-double already, Darren. That will be her 13th rebound. Have turned it into 14 second chance points. Have owned the Dragons in the paint as well. Dragons down by seven. Bradshaw pulls up from 14, kicks it up high to Roebuck. And Roebuck dead center, knocks down the triple. Huge three right there by Roebuck. 17 for her. 17th three-pointer on the season for Roebuck. Lexi Hernandez from a different zip code on the far sideline knocks down the three. Hernandez has 13. It's her third three-pointer of the game. Now we'll force the timeout. They're trying to fix press row. Came apart here down in front of us. Not sure if a player ran into it, but a piece has come off. <laughs> this came out of the middle. And this, I didn't see a player run into it. I'm not sure what happened because the three was hit. Maybe Brock is down there on his call getting a little too excited. Might be. Knocking pieces off the table. It's 56-49. Dragons down by seven with 7.42 remaining. Jayhawk West title on the line. Robot back-to-back -back threes. She returns the favor. This one in the face of Lexi Hernandez. Yeah, she has 16 now. Coming up with two big threes right there. Saints work offensively. Green driving against Bradshaw. And Bradshaw will get called with the push. Bradshaw picks up the first. Not only her first. It's only the second team foul. So with 7.29 to go, a lot of game left before somebody shooting free throws by way of the bonus. Dragons back within four. Trailed by as many as 14. Led by as many as four. 7.24 left here in this fourth quarter of action. Green working against Roebuck. Had to pick it up. Dishes off to Hernandez, and Hernandez, Ooh. a little baby hook in the paint, 
They say that Michaela Van Ant grabbed just enough of her to get the second foul on Michaela Van Ant. Will be two coming for Lexi Hernandez, and she is a good free throw shooter. First free throw is good. She's definitely shown us her range today. 14 points for her. Not only able to knock it down from four or five feet beyond the arc, but to do it with six footers in her face. Second free throw is good. She's also dished out four assists. The difference in, contest. in yeah, the difference in second chance points is 14 to seven, not counting those two free throws right there, and then 21 to 12 on points off turnovers. That's the difference in these in these two squads right now with a six point difference. Saints lead it by six. Almost three minutes gone by in the fourth quarter of play. Bradshaw, right wing, looks for the cutting Kimbrough. Kimbrough wide open, can't finish. Too high off the glass. Came off the far side of the rim, and Shadwoska pulls it down. Shadwoska wants to go by Kimbrough and Bradshaw. Can't finish, and Kimbrough pulls down the rebound. Under seven to go now. 58-52, Saints on top. Far corner, Ogle. Goes up, up high to the free throw line to Kimbrough. Kimbrough underneath to Dejanay Roebuck. And Roebuck loops it in. The reverse layup is good. Yeah, Roebuck finally showing what she can do. 18 points for her. She's came alive here in the fourth. 18 this afternoon. Only four the first time these two teams met. Number four for the Saints. Kalen Green tries the three. No good. And the Dragons a chance to cut into this four-point lead. John Anches wants to take a timeout. 58-54 your score. Saints on top. 6.18 left here in the fourth quarter of action. This is a 30-second timeout. We all like to save money when and where we can, right? You can do that every day at Salt City Pawn and Jewelry. Hi, this is owner Paul Phillips inviting you to stop in and say hi to our friendly staff. And while you're here, check out over 3,000 square feet of great merchandise priced at outstanding values. We don't have to offer huge sale prices for one day only when we do that on a daily basis. Save big over retail prices on firearms, electronics, guitars and amps, name brand tools, video games, jewelry, and more. See us at 916 East 4th and Hutch, just east of 4th and Severance alumni and supporters of all Blue Dragon Athletics. Blue Dragons trail up by four. This game is anybody's for the taking right there. 58-40-54. Hutch came roaring back, took the lead. Right now trail up by four, but have made a couple mistakes, but now have the basketball in their possession, so anything could happen. Playing without Keely Tinney, who's out for the second game, and that's pretty big, as a matter of fact. Messes up the rotation, Darren. She's playing under concussion protocol. She hopes to be back on Thursday. 90-second meeting between these two teams over the years. The Dragons only 16 and 25 here in Liberal trying to win the Jayhawk West title and get a first round bye. Little shake and shimmy for Abby Ogle from the right wing. The reverse layup spins and puts it in for two for Abby Ogle. Her first basket of the game. That's big right there. Under six now. Dragons back within two. It's the Saints on top, 58-56. Lexi Hernandez gets the screen from Shudowelska. Goes right side to Veloso. Novani setting the screen on Bradshaw, but Bradshaw able to slip it. Inside now, Veloso decides to kick it back out to Hernandez. Hernandez from 15 had it partially blocked up high by Roebuck, yeah. but the officials say Roebuck got her with the body. Yeah, her momentum carried her into her after the shot a little bit there. We'll send her to the line to shoot free throws. Looks clean up high, but those hips, as Shakira says, they do not lie. And that's what Roebuck bumped into the side of Hernandez with that momentum missed, that Glenn indicated. Missed the free throw, however. She'd hit a couple in a row. She was four for four. Did more than that. She was four for four in a row. Now four for five as Mickens will check in for Kimbrough. Two-point ball game, 58-56. Saints with the lead. They can extend it to a one-position. This is a one-position game. Can make it a three-point lead with a free throw here. Mickens checks in with three fouls. Second free throw. Wow, rattles off the front. Rare for Hernandez, who is an 85% free throw shooter. Started the game four for four, missed both there. Pressure is such a crazy thing, and the Dragons are down by two. Thea Bradshaw from that right side. The runner can't get it to go. Mm. Last touch by Abby Ogle on the baseline, trying to rebound it. So with 5.20 left, Dragons still trail it by two. Yeah, Bradshaw with a great opportunity to tie it up, but the little runner did not go. 5.18 to go. Dragons down by as many as 14 in this game. Have not come back from anything more than a five-point deficit to win this year. Only loss this season was in the sports arena to these Saints. 
Kovani, the turnaround on Mickens, no good, but offensive rebound on the backside. Oh. Dragons come away with that putback, but Vanette loses it off the side of her ankle. Out of bounds it goes, it'll be Saints basketball. 15 turnovers now for Hutchinson. Might sound like a lot, but the Dragons had 25 last time these two met. Five minutes left with the Jayhawk West title on the line. Dragons down by two. Saints with the ball. Veloso gets a screen from Kovani. Kovani rolls into the paint. Shot up and no good. Pressure put on by Mickens, and the Dragons come away with the rebound. Saints fall back in the man-to-man defense. Roebuck wants it against Shadowoska on the inside. Won't get it. So Roebuck will come up and set a screen. Two posts high. Roebuck and Mickens at both elbows. Roebuck goes left wing. Abby Ogle by herself on the right side. Splits two defenders. Got in between Buku Bakini and puts it in for two. We're tied at 58. 4.26 to go in a contest. Saints trying to value the possession. We've seen them force the issue so many times. Now taking a little bit of clock. Lots of pressure that time on the shot. Put up by the Saints and no good. Abby Ogle put a lot of pressure on Veloso, but another yeah. offensive rebound, and this time on the putback, Ogle is called for the foul. Yeah, that'll be her four, so she's got a big smile on her face. I don't believe she thought she had been that aggressive, but Schemmel will get set to check in here in a second. 58-58 tie. Seward at the line and shoots free throw with 4.10 to go. Shedwoska too strong on the first free throw. He only has four in this contest. At 11, the last time these two met. You get the feeling that these two teams are going to meet again soon. It's very possible. You'd like to see him break even here as the second free throw rattles out for Shedwoska. A 61% free throw shooter on the season. We're still tied at 58. Ah. Rasha loses it at half court. Pulled away by Veloso. As Shedwoska on the inside will opt against it. Brings the ball up high. Left side, isolate. Muku Bakiti kicks it to the right corner to Hernandez. Hernandez, an air ball, but an offensive rebound once again for the Saints. The ball didn't touch the rim, so 10 to shoot. Shadowska against Vanette. Pulls up and right over the top of Vanette. Knocks it down from 13. Yeah, that's a big basket right there. Two point lead and a 30 second timeout with 3.38 to go. We'll get a break in. 30-second timeout coming your way. Drag is down by two, but has the basketball with 3.38 to go. We'll be back in 30 seconds. HCC Sports is brought to you by the Sportscaster Club members, Portfolio Recovery Associates, Dr. Robert F. of the Hutchinson Clinic, Barkley Plumbing, Vernon Chiropractic Center, Tim and Gina Ritter, along with Brian Strange of the Green Vision Group, Sutton Kaufman Transmission Service, Wade Patton Insurance, A&A Builders, Bold Office Shares, Mega Manufacturing, MAYB, Mid-America Youth Basketball, Owen Corporation, Hogwild Pit Barbecue, and by Man, Wyatt, and Rice, LLC. These Sportscaster Club members help provide funds for HCC scholarships. We're back on basketball on 7102.9, KHUT at Hudson, as well as KWBW Hutchinson, as well on the AM side and the FM side. 60-40-58, a two-point lead for the Saints Blue Dragons basketball, Darren. Dragons have not won here in five years. Since Jamie Patrick was on the floor for the Blue Dragons. This afternoon, she's on the bench as an assistant coach with John Oshins, Travis Kirk, and Phil Anderson. Dragons have the ball offensively, a chance to tie or take the lead. Schimmel in there with Vanette, Mickens, Roebuck, and Bradshaw. It's Vanette with the ball, gets a little bit of a screen, kicks it back to Roebuck for three, no good. Near offensive rebound mm-hmm. by Mickens, had it knocked away by Veloso. Here come the Saints. Saints have led by as many as 14. Dragons came back in the third quarter to go up by four. Dragons now down by two with three minutes. Need a stop. Schimmel guarding Veloso, who opts for the three. No good. And no one will get the rebound out of bounds on the far sideline to the Blue Dragons. 2.54 to go in the contest. Dragons trail up a two, but have the basketball. Hutchinson's had their opportunities this, this game. This is two Blue Bloods going at it right here. Way too many offensive rebounds given up by the Blue Dragons to the Saints. But still within two. Ogle drives in against three defenders. Kicks to Bradshaw for three. No good. Rebound by Kovani. Kovani nearly had it stripped on the way out. But the Saints will pull it down. So with two and a half left, 
the Jayhawk West title on the line. It's the Saints up 60-58. Right wing over to Muku Bakini. Saints work the ball around the horn. Left wing down to Hernandez, guarded by Van Eck. Shudwoska goes inside to Kovani and left it wide. Turnover, Seward. There was seven seconds on the shot clock, so they would have had a tough time getting one off. But a good turnover right there for the Blue Dragons. So with 2.15 left. Dragons once again. Chance to tie it or take the lead. Bradshaw dribbles down right in front of the Blue Dragon bench. Working left to right as you listen. On Country 102.9 and KWBW. And as you watch on the Blue Dragon Sports Network. Bradshaw nearly had the ball stolen away. It's Veloso putting on the pressure. Bradshaw got by her after she recovered the ball and was fouled by Shudwoska in front of the Blue Dragon bench. Third that's only, one on Carolina. Yeah, that's only the second foul, though, so not a, shoot, not a shooting situation, not a Hutchinson will inbound with a fresh 30, however. Seven was on the shot clock, so that might work in the Blue Dragon's favor. Abby Yogle to inbound right in front of the Blue Dragon bench. Dragons down by two with under two. Left in this contest, at least in regulation. Bradshaw, guarded closely by Veloso, 35 feet from the hoop. Goes right wing to Ogle. Ogle dances through a few defenders, and Ogle lays it in for her sixth point of the contest. How in the world did she get that one down? Looked like she's going to go right, then it looked like she's going to go left, and then she decided to go straight away. We are tied at 60 apiece, under a minute and a half left in the greenhouse. Veloso goes left baseline, dribbled it off her shoe. Turnover, Saints. The Dragons with an opportunity now with 1.22 to go. Saints only 15 turnovers the first time these two met. At least 17 here today. Need a good possession. Got to get points out of this possession. Dragons are going to take a timeout. John Anches throws up the fist. No question about it. The officials know that's a timeout here in Liberal. <laughs> It'll be a full timeout. We're tied at 60. A minute 14 left. We're back in a minute. This is Carter File, president of Hutchinson Community College. I invite you to join us this winter as the proud tradition of Blue Dragon men's and women's basketball continues at the historic Hutchinson Sports Arena. Both teams are favorites in the tough Jayhawk Conference, so you won't want to miss any of the action. Find the schedule at bluedragonsports.com, like us on Facebook, and follow Blue Dragon Sports on Twitter. As always, go Blue Dragons. RCAT is now part of a regional transportation partnership with Sedgwick County Transportation and Wichita Transit. We are working together to provide rides to Wichita and back on Tuesdays. Wichita Transit has fixed route and paratransit service available within the city. Round trip costs range between $19 and $27. Advanced registration with RCAT is required. RCAT is first come, first serve general public transportation. Call 694-2913 for details. Well, a minute and 14 to go in the contest. We're tied up at 60 apiece. Dragons with possession, 23 on the shot clock. That's just going to be nice to get a basket right here on this possession. Put some pressure on the Lady Saints. Abby Ogle has turned it on here in this fourth quarter of play. Had not scored a basket until she knifed through that defense a couple of times. She now has six. Remember, Glenn, those came as well after she airballed a three from the corner. Yep. Dragons were down by as many as 14, down by eight at the half, led by four in the third, and we're tied at 60 apiece with a minute nine left in the greenhouse. Ogle goes far side to Bradshaw, cross-court pass to the right block. She has to turn around and force one up, couldn't get the initial layup, but had to gather her feet. Got him underneath her, put one up against Veloso no. off the backboard. Right with 59 ticks left on the clock. Now it's down to 50. Pressure on Seward with 45 seconds left. Shudwoska three. Top of the key, no good. Rebounded, not cleanly, but pulled down by Mickens oh. just for her to throw it away on the sideline looking for Bradshaw. Uh, she got the rebound, like you said. It wasn't clean, but then she kicked it out and turned over. It'll be a fresh 30 with 39.9 to go for the Saints. They trail it by two. About a 9.9 second differential between game clock and shot clock. Dragons up by two, and the Saints will take a timeout. 
This is a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it right here with the Dragons ahead, 62-60. Trailed by as many as 14 in this contest. Came back, led by four in that third quarter. Put on a nice 16-1 run that extended from a Van Ed three-pointer to close out the first half of action into that third quarter of play where it took the Saints a long time to finally get a field goal down. Had just a free throw during that 16-1 run. The Saints then pushed back. And lately, it's been Abby Ogle and Tia Bradshaw finishing at the right block for the Dragons on the offensive ends. All righty. Let's set it up with 39.9 to go. Hutchinson up by two. Saints basketball. Boy, it would have been interesting if Hutchinson could have kept that possession. Saints would have had the foul, I believe. Hutchinson could have milked it all the way down because right now... Saints with only two fouls. We'll see if the Saints will use all of this shot clock, which would take the game clock down under 10 seconds left. Saints have the ball high to Veloso, guarded by Bradshaw. She crosses over Bradshaw, layup is good. From the left side, we're tied at 62, and with 26.7 seconds left, the Saints will take a timeout. We're tied at 62. Actually, the Dragons will take the full timeout. Tied at 62, 26.7 left. We're back in 30 seconds. No time to fix breakfast? Just call us at Anchor Away, 662-3100, and we'll have it ready for you. Choose from our selection of breakfast burritos, biscuits, or one of our five different complete breakfast plates. Breakfast from 7 to 1030, Monday through Saturday. If you missed us for breakfast, we're here for lunch and dinner, too. Pick up your favorite Mexican dinner or take some home for the family. We're open till 9. That's Anchor Away, drive through carry-out, and catering under the water tower at b and Adams in Hutchinson, 662-3100. Dragons tied at 62, 26.7 seconds left. It was Tia Bradshaw moments ago to put the Blue Dragons up from that right block. Couldn't get the layup opportunity from the long pass, cross court from the left wing to the right block from Abby Ogle, but was able to turn around and force one up off the glass. Yeah, right with 59 seconds left to go. The Dragons had a chance then off of the miss from the Saints to secure the ball and run some clock, but Mickens threw the ball past Tia Bradshaw. The Saints got a chance to take the ball back, and Sylvia Veloso used it to her advantage, crossed over on Tia Bradshaw, and that's where we're at, tied at 62 with the Blue Dragon basketball with just under 27 ticks left. Well, you're going to see what kind of defense they're going to be in. And if you're the Saints, you have fouls to give. You only have two against you. Thank you. So, so you know, I mean, you can clobber somebody if you wanted to, Darren, and make a situation As right long as there. you go for the ball. You have right, clobber exactly. by going for the ball. Dragons will opt to move the ball up. That's a timeout after the main basket by the Saints. So the ball comes out to the coach's box line, and the Dragons will inbound in their own front court. 25 seconds. Tia Bradshaw guarded by Veloso. Veloso tries for the steal. Doesn't get it. Dragons go right wing to Van Ed. Make a value. Dragons can take this one all the way down to the last shot if they so choose. 15 to shoot. Bradshaw goes left. Hands off to Mickens. Mickens guarded by Kwamba. Eight to shoot. Dragons up near half court. Bradshaw trying to yell out the offense. Goes right wing to Ogle. Ogle steps back at the buzzer. The shot up no good. The rebound will happen at the buzzer by Mickens. And this one is headed for overtime. Dragons 62. Saints 62. Only fitting with the Jayhawk West title on the line. We're back in one minute. Next Tech Wireless has plans for every lifestyle, including our new and improved advanced pay plan. Get the nationwide coverage and data you want without a commitment. Plans start at $30 per month, and you can get unlimited everything for as low as $35 per month. Activate a new advanced pay plan and receive a free Moto G4 Play. Or receive your first month free when you purchase a new phone or bring your own phone. Tis the season for savings. Visit Next Tech Wireless today. Certain restrictions apply. Hi, Brian Bobo, General Manager at Midwest Ford. We have some huge savings on the remainder of our 2018 F-150s with up to a $2,500 rebate and, yes, I said, and 0% for 60 months. Or how about 10000 off MSRP on a 2018 Edge? Or what about even 12000 off and 2018 Expedition? Wow, hurry, they won't last. So come see us today at 1100 East 30th or online at MidwestSuperstore.com. 
Well, only the fourth overtime game in the series. The last one dated back to 2016, November of 2016, here on this floor when Hutchinson lost 77 to 70. Before that one, it was all the way back to 09 and 06 before that. So neither team has played a whole lot of overtimes against each other. So we'll see what happens here. Hutchinson had the opportunity with possession, Darren, was not able to get a good look. First overtime game of the year for the Blue Dragons. The Saints, as we mentioned in the open, have already been here. In fact, have won a lot of close games, 9-1 and one in one possession games. Yeah, Blue Dragons win the clock. tip. The clock didn't get going. And because it did not, the Blue Dragons will have to inbound from in front of the scorer's table. They might take a few seconds off the clock here. Game clock and shot clock, both neither started. Now they'll take two seconds off. And the Dragons will have to start with two seconds off the game clock, two seconds off the shot clock. Tia Bradshaw goes right wing, pulls up, now up high to Roebuck. Roebuck gets a double screen from Ogle and Mickens. Mickens, J. Curl out of it, gets the pass. Now right wing to Bradshaw, inside to Roebuck. Can oh. Roebuck finish? This is something that we saw twice last week it's in the NCAA alone. The ball is stuck on the flange. So that is that jump ball possession that goes over to Seward. Oh, Roebuck went three for ten in that first half. Uh, where was, Had a chance to finish here, and it got stuck on the flange. Where was Sir Isaac Newton when we needed him right there? It just laid up on the flat part of the rim against the glass and stopped. Almost looked like it was going to continue rolling and then stopped, as you indicated, and the Saints will take the basketball. Possession arrow, though, does go back to the Blue Dragons if we have another jump ball. They look though, all the way to the hoop. Takes the contact. It's an and one. The foul goes against Jada Mickens, her fourth. Two points in overtime for Veloso. Remember, she waited to get going. Mm-hmm. Finally got her first basket in that second half at the free throw line. Makes her 10th point with the free throw there. It's another one here. And it's a three-point advantage in overtime early for the Saints. 45 seconds gone by. Bradshaw had it stripped. It's Peloso. Bradshaw contests the layup. But Peloso puts it through for two. And it is a five-point advantage for the Saints of Seward here in overtime. Much like the Saints did to the Cougars here. A few weeks ago, just took it away in the overtime. There's a foul out front. They've got him to give. That'll be the third team foul. Veloso will pick up the first one. That is her third. And that was a, an interesting game because they were able to beat the Cougars by 10. You normally don't see teams break away like that in the overtime mm-hmm. period. But if those first 60 seconds or so are any indication, that tells you what kind of pressure the Saints can put on. Dragons have turned it over now, by the way, 18 times. Bradshaw gets the ball underneath, able to put it in for two. Bradshaw with their eighth point. Just over three and a half remaining here in overtime. Saints up 67-64. Kovani goes to work on the inside against Mickens. Shot no good. Roebuck just does pull down the rebound. Not many of those rebounds for the Dragons between Roebuck and Mickens have been clean. They've bobbled them off the glass, but the Dragons able to maintain possession this time. Giving up 20 offensive rebounds in this one to Seward. Dragons a chance to tie, or at least get this within Mm -hmm. one. Eight to shoot, Vanette off the curl. Gets it in from 12, shot up no good. Battle for the rebound taken down by Muku Bakiti. Three minutes remain here in the overtime session. Saints up by three, led by as many as 14 in this contest. Dragons led by as many as four in that third quarter. Chudwoska tried to flop a little bit away from the ball, didn't get the call. Hernandez on the inside, and that little runner from eight is good. Hernandez with 17. Yeah, she just rolled off the pick right there, put it up in. That's a big basket with 2.30 to go. Hernandez having a career game, had only 12 points the last time these two met. Had 10 in her last game against Northwest Tech. Dragons down by five. 2.20 left in OT. Ogle goes to the ground on the right elbow. Stands up just in time to receive the pass from Bradshaw. Ogle for three, no good. Pulled down by the Saints via Carla Kovani. Saints now who have been pushing the ball up the floor. 
have a chance to take a little bit of a breather and slow things down. Austin Medford signals what he wants offensively with his Saints up by five. And you mentioned a rebound a little while ago with Mickens and Roebuck not quite being clean. One would have given a possession with the lead with 26 to go. Didn't get it. Hernandez inside and with four seconds on the shot clock got a timeout call for Seward. It's 69-64, minute 45 left in OT. We're back in 30 seconds. At Strategic Financial Concepts, we understand if income taxes continue to go up as they have for almost the last 30 years as per the IRS, you may need to adjust your spending habits so you don't run out of money. How much money are you going to give to the government in the form of income taxes over your lifetime? Let's have a cup of coffee and a conversation. Call me, Jay Pitzer, at 960749. Securities offered through the ON Equity Sales Company, member FINRA, SIPC, Investment Advisory Services offered through ON Investment Management Company. So a strange start to this overtime. The game clock and shot clock did not start. Dragons got the tip and had to stall offensively to inbound. And then you have the shot that goes up and rests on the flange mm. to give the possession over arrow over to the Saints. Now up by five, Hernandez as the shot clock expires. No good. But Shadowoska, the offensive rebound, and she was held on the putback by Dejanae Roebuck. Yeah, Roebuck, the offensive boards are killing the Dragons. An op- opportunity here. For sure to go up in a big way. They're up right now by five, 69 to 64. Third foul on Roebuck. Shedwoska can't get that one to roll over the top of the rim. She's now missed her last three free throw attempts. Just a 60% free throw shooter on the year. Trying to give her Saints a six point advantage. Second free throw is good. She does. Seven points for Shedwoska. Uncharacteristic for her. She averages over 10. Dragons needing desperately to cut into this six-point lead with under a minute and a half to go. Manette has been quiet since she hit her fourth three-pointer of the game. Can she hit a three here? No. Glances off the front of the rim. Abby Ogle to clean up the putback. No good. But she was fouled on the way back up. This goes against Lexi Hernandez, her first. So Abby Ogle will go to the line for the first time this afternoon. A game that started this afternoon, but now into the evening hours as the first free throw is up and no good. Abby Ogle scored most of her six points, I believe, in that fourth quarter. She had to knife into the lane a few times. Made some unbelievable finishes at the rim after airballing a corner three. Second free throw also no good, but Dejanae Roebuck tracks it down. She's at the right wing and sets up the Blue Dragons offensively. Over to Bradshaw, guarded by Veloso. She wants to work that right side. At least she thought about it until Roebuck came around to that right block. Got to go. Ball goes left side with 15 to shoot to Ogle, and Ogle on the drive. Fouled by Shadowska. It's bonus time. Stops the the clock with 103 to go. Both teams in the bonus now, as Darren just indicated. 70-64, 6.2 position lead for the Saints. We were tied at 62 at the start of this overtime. So ain't an answer point. Eight. The two run right here, and Noble makes the free throw. Making amends for those two misses moments ago. Mapasua and Kramer check in for the Dragons. Bradshaw and Vanette go to the bench. Second free throw coming. Look at the two possession game. For Ogle, high arc, no good. Rebounded, pulled down by Muku Bakiti, and the Dragons with under a minute are down five. Sarah Kramer in there, maybe to get a steal or a yeah. foul. Gets neither. Mapasua nearly pushes Hernandez back across half court, but can't do it without the foul. It will actually be credited to Mapasua. Actually, I think Kramer and Mapasua are both in there to put some pressure on, and if you have to, foul. That's your only hope now. You're down by five with 52.3 to go. you got to get them to miss and get possessions. Hernandez at the line. Missed her last two opportunities. This one rattles out. Good job, Darren. Here is your offense for defense substitutions. Schimmel and Vanette will come in for Kramer and Roebuck. Only one Saint in the rebound. That's Muku Bakidi for Blue Dragons. So if there is a miss, which there is, Dragons need to come away with what they do. It's Schimmel. 70-65. 48 ticks left. Dragons get the timeout. Just as they cross half court, Dragons take a timeout. 
We're going to keep it here in overtime as with 47 seconds left, Dragons lead it, or excuse me, Dragons trail it by five. Yep, Dragons trail it right here by five. Two possession game. Got to get the quick one here with 47.2 to go. Dodge City with the win in women's play eliminates Northwest Kansas Tech out of the west side of the uh, of the bracket or uh, of the uh, of the standings that is so uh, that puts Dodge at 9 and 12 Northwest Kansas Tech falls to 2 and 19 so 3 4 5 6 and 7 are all set with Dodge with that win gets gets bumped by Garden City with Garden City getting beat by the Cougars so the one bracket there is Dodge will travel to Cloud and uh, Indy will host Garden City. So those are two that take place. The whole bracket will be set after this game right here. And right now, the edge for the Saints. Dragons down 70 to 65. That was the last time out for Hutchinson. Manette looks inside to Mickens. Had the entry pass tapped, but Mickens able to come up with it. Roebuck gets the pass, and it's stolen away by Veloso. Tia Bradshaw has to take the foul on Veloso. It is foul number two against Tia, and the Saints have a chance up five to go up by seven as Veloso heads to the free throw line. First overtime game of the season for the Blue Dragons. Fourth overtime game overall against the Saints, and the first free throw for Veloso Mm -hmm. is good. Another player that waited to get going in this one. Started scoring late, started it with a free throw. This one ends here with a missed free throw. Dragons down by six. 30 seconds left. Ogle had a path to the lane, had it momentarily knocked away. Finds Mickens, though, on the recovery on the left block, and that's good. So the Dragons will take the quick foul off the inbound. Abby Ogle gets her fifth and final foul. That's a situation where you want Abby Ogle to know, okay, we need you to stay in this game. You have five. We need to take the foul, but we don't want you to take it. She does, so she exits the game with seven points, and Milan Schimmel will check in in her place. Shot clock is dark, 28.7 seconds left. Saints at the line for two. First free throw is no good. All of a sudden, Saints aren't hitting free throws. This makes a big one right here. Hutch with an opportunity. Saints not a good free throw shooting team. Almost last in the conference at number 14. The second free throw goes for Veloso. She has 10. Dragons with 25 seconds left. Desperately need a basket. Down by five. Schimmel guarded by Veloso. And finally, Veloso gets called for the reach in. That's not a bad foul right there by Veloso. She hits the two free throws. It's still a one possession game in the lead at 72 69. Rather than give up the three, Darren, with the possibility of a foul on that to make it a four-point difference. Veloso, with at least five steals, has gotten away with a lot up and there. Now it's academic. And the first Schimmel free throw is no good from Milan Schimmel. Schimmel one for three from the line. Second free throw coming. Too strong. And rebounded by Muku Bakiti. Roebuck and Schimmel went in to try and tie it up. But the foul goes against Station A. Roebuck, her fourth. So 18.3 seconds remain here in overtime in the greenhouse. Dragons down by five. Saints in the bonus headed to the line. First trip for Akila Mukubakiti to the line. Ten Quiet. points so far. The first free throw rattles out almost and then comes back down for the point. Vanette will stay in and Schemmel will check out. So they're for the Dragons, Roebuck, Mapasua, Mickens, Vanette, and Bradshaw. Six-point lead with 18.3 to go. It's doable, doable, but they need a miss and a quick three. <laughs> a couple of quick threes, actually. Dragons down by as many as 14 in this one. As that free throw goes, Luku Bakidi has 12. Went up by as many as four in the third quarter. Saints able to force overtime. Mapasua loses the ball. And on the recovery by Veloso, Mapasua called for the hold. 
Good effort by the Blue Dragons. They're going to fall to feet right here. And it's pretty academic with 13.1 to go. 74-67, Saints on top. But they came back, had a chance to win it in the fourth. Saw it get tied at 62 apiece and saw the Saints right the, sh- right the ship. Right now they lead at 74 to 67 with 13.1 to go and shooting free throws 75 67 in the person of Veloso. Dragons only five points in this overtime period. Second free throw is up. It is also good. Veloso was 16. She had 23 in the win at Hutchinson. 10 ticks left. Tia Bradshaw inside finds an open Mickens and Mickens finishes at the basket. The timeout is taken by Seward. 76-67 your score here at OT. 76-69 now with 6.9 left. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Basketballs are bouncing and crowds are cheering. Your best offense during cold and flu season is a good defense. Drink plenty of liquids, get plenty of rest, and keep your hands sanitized. If a bug still manages to get you, Ashcraft Pharmacy, your local Health Mart pharmacy, has over-the-counter medications that can help. Or if you need a prescription, we offer free mail-out, free delivery, or call ahead for our handy curbside service. Go Dragons! From Ashcraft Pharmacy in the Heart Shopping Center, South Hutchinson, and Health Mart, caring for you and about you. Well, 6.9 to go. Blue Dragons trail it, 76-69. Saints shooting free throws. And the brackets are set now. In the women's side, it will be Hutchison taking on Allen County. That will be the three seed getting second place in the West. In the tournament's three seed, they'll match up against last place Allen County. They'll play, if they win that game, then they play the winner of Garden and Indy. So they're going to be opposite the bracket from Seward. Of course, the Dragons went out to Iola and beat Allen in January, 102-67. Saints move the ball forward and will inbound the Dragons. Will quick, foul. Yeah, quick foul by Schimmel. Schimmel fouls Shedowska. She'll head to the line with 4.6 left here in OT. And as well as some on the men's side, number 19, Barton, lost to Garden City, 90-77. to So, Darren, Barton will be... Finish third in the West. They'll be the number five seed on the men's bracket. And they'll match up against Neosho. They'll host Neosho. As the free throw is made by Shudloska. She'll get one more. She's the only Saint in the paint right now. She's at the line. Four Dragons to rebound. It goes to Van Nett. Three seconds as she crosses half court. Van Nett wants to pull up five feet from beyond the line. No good. And that's how OT ends. Seward County Saints victorious here this afternoon and win the Jayhawk West title in overtime against the Blue Dragons of Hutchinson Community College, 77-69. We're back to wrap the numbers in two minutes. Your life is busy. Are you ready to open an account? 